scratching on for them. Make the bed. Do you want a cup of tea? Yeah, I'd love one. There you go. Oh, just before you go, forget it. <laughs> if they asked me to do that, I would, I'd, I'd quit. And I think it, I don't think it happens because people it wouldn't take happen. that on for a job. You it never does. hear about it. On Comic Relief, when they're raising the money, they don't go, thanks to Midland Bank for this hundred grand, that's gonna go towards Arthur getting his end away. That's no. ridiculous. So you, you would, you would rather them not have the pleasure of each other than just help them in. No, because they'd, w- they'd work out some way that they could do something for each other. I, I like to play the guitar, my fingers aren't long enough. I'd knocked it on the head. <laughs> it's the same thing. If you can't do it, don't do it. So are you telling me, right, okay, um, if the- supposing there's a, li- a little fellow who's got no arms, no legs, right? Right. L- little Bob, okay, there he is. All right, Carl. All right. Um, he's got a friend. Another little fella with no arms and no legs. All right, Carl. Right? They love each other. Two little, two little fellas. Little, two little dwarves with no arms and no legs. Okay? Lovely little fellas. They get married. Okay? Look, yeah, Carl. You can't, you can't put my, uh, up my, um, my boyfriend's bottom, can you? No, you I can't. Go- no. Why, why not? Why no, not? Do you need Carl? anything else doing? Uh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah, no, it's weird how you can manage everything else. Well, no, I'm no. here to help you. Everything else seems to be sorted. Well, just in the chair. Why do you need help in this department? Well, because he's over there and I'm here and I just- if you just pop me in and just leave No, I'm not there. doing that. It's not good for you. You've lost your arms and legs. You'll be losing that soon if you carry on sticking it up there. <laughs> <laughs> After the medical advancements of the Greeks and the Romans, of course, uh, through the Middle Ages, particularly in Europe, we ended up going backwards, um, and it became, uh, you know, people sort of returned to superstition, started relying on that, you know, sanitation was poor, a lot of the amazing sanitation the Romans had built was left to ruin, and uh, we went backwards, and really it wasn't until the Renaissance that people like Leonardo da Vinci started to, uh, you know, draw uh, pictures of the anatomy and so on. Well, putting science scientific um, evidence and experimentation behind the theories as opposed to someone with a big cauldron saying if you bury your toad your warts go away. Exactly. He looked into this and uh, and then thought well maybe they don't. Maybe it's a coincidence you know. So uh, that's what our experimentation comes. Empirical evidence not just hope. Of course, you still couldn't uh, experiment or dissect humans because that was frowned upon. Uh, so often they would actually, they, the only people they were allowed to dissect and operate on were criminals. And at times, criminals would actually be uh, dissected or cut open whilst they were still alive as part of their punishment. Is that ever justifiable? Do you think, uh, Carl, that people sacrifice for medical advancements? They do it now, don't they? You hear about these people having, uh, you know, tests done on them, you get paid twenty quid and they say, let's, let's rub this cream on your head. Yeah. And you get your twenty quid and if, if your head goes funny, they say, well, you took the twenty quid, it's your own fault. Wasn't that a student that took, like, yeah, a few grand? Yeah, he what became happened? the living elephant man, didn't he? Oh yeah. It was quite horrific, his head was in all kinds of weird Yeah, shapes. I mean that's unfortunate for twenty quid. But I'd say do it on the ill people, because they've got nothing to lose. Just test it. It's, you know, all this testing on animals and that. Well, don't test it on animals. If you've got an itch, the doctor can say, I've got this cream here, we haven't tested it, it might work, it might make it worse, give it a go. Right. Yeah, but the whole point is that if you do that, someone's head might blow up to the side yeah, of the and elephant. it might outweigh well, the ailment. That's you happened already. A fellow who had nothing wrong with him has now got a head of the elephant man. For yeah. 20 quid. Yes, I know. Well, but that isn't fair. No, I know. But you're saying, um, you're going for athlete's foot, rub this on your feet, are oh, your bollocks fat off? Never mind, it was a chance we had to take. I mean, that's a particularly sloppy bit of medical research, that <laughs> one. <laughs> no, yeah. No, but say like my aunt Inora, right, she's had everything wrong with her, right? She's had tablets that, that haven't been tested on anyone else. They test them on Nora. She's, and she's up for it. She's like, oh, I haven't had that. That's our little <laughs> tester. Yeah. She loves it. But she's, she's, she, she knows that that's the case, and she's happier to give something a go than not a go. I mean, it's ridiculous, the amount of stuff. She rattles, she carries that many pills, <laughs> like a maraca. <laughs> you can hear her coming. But that's, that's the way her life is now. She's just used to the fact that if it weren't for all these tablets, 
she'd be dead. Yeah, but the, well, not necessarily. But the, but but the pills. She doesn't take pills that have been untested. She's not taking experimental I think pills. She's Carl. she's honestly she's got so much. Uh, well, so, okay, you just lot. you just <coughs> made that up then. You just assume that that they haven't been tested on someone. Where they get and where they get these pills from that haven't been tested? Well, it's it, it's all very new. She's she's on a lot of new medication that can go either way. Could this be one of the reasons why she farted for 24 hours? It, it could have been one of the side effects. Five minutes. Oh, five minutes, was it? Yeah, yeah. that's, that's, that's what the, that's, you know, that's what my mum said. It's all the medication. Cause your body's in shock, isn't it? It's been, you know, given all these drugs that it's not used to. Luckily some of the pills weren't suppositories cause she'd have lost them. <laughs> in, in the, in the, in the great fart of 1989. <laughs> I've lost all my suppositories. <laughs> but you know, that's what you do, isn't it? If you're in pain. And, uh, I mean, like, I don't know if I told you, when I had kidney stones. I think you mentioned it. I was in agony. Yeah. And they said in the, I was in A&E, mm. lying on my back. Mm. And the woman at the A&E counter said to Suzanne, who's that over there? And she said, always oh, with me. He's in agony. So they said, what's up with him? So they said, oh, it's his kidney stones again. Because this is when I went back at the night. Mm. I, I was like... I couldn't care that people were staring at me. I, I was rolling about on the floor like a, a dying fly on my back. I just didn't care about what was going on around me. But I was told that because it's busy that they might have to send someone out to shove like something up my arse that would get to the pain quicker. Well, what do you mean send them out? Well, they send- what, no, while no, you're no, lying no, on the no, floor no. in A&E they're gonna no, send something so, yeah, What do you mean? Oh, you mean a- oh, you mean a- uh, uh, a pill? I thought you meant to get to your kidney quicker than up your nose. No, 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 a pill, they put it up there and, yeah. and apparently it'll kick in quicker. Yeah, yeah. The tablet works quicker. Yeah. Up your arse and it does down your throat. Yeah, because it's a mucous done? membrane and it's- uh, yeah. Well, I, I was up for it. I just was like, whatever it takes. Now, saying uh, that to me now- But now, hold on though, what if the doctor said, okay, um, I could give you this morphine, take it, it will take a few minutes to kick in, or I could rub some on my, um, uh, I'll pop an orange on the end of my- I rub that in morphine and I pop that out of your, uh, your, your, your rectum, Mr. Pilgerton. Are you in agony or not? Are you in agony? Okay, look, I'm just smearing- I'd, I'd, I'd say I'll get uh, a second opinion. Well, no, you haven't, you haven't got time. There it is. Do you want this up- do you want this up your ass? It's covered in morphine. He's, um, uh, in his private life, he's a- he's a- he's a promiscuous gay man, but in his- in his professional life, he is a doctor with, um, a morphine smeared and he's ready for action. So, if you, uh, you and he's he, willing to do that in the middle of A and E. Yeah, well, so he takes no pleasure from that. It's, it's the just only way. To, so, are you in pain? Do you want this done or not? Yes or no? He comes out into A and E reception. His trousers around his ankles. He has an yeah. erect penis. He says, "Carl, do you want me to stick this up your ass?" And your answer is yes or no. I, 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 You're in <laughs> terrible agony. He's wearing a condom. He smeared the condom in. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not unprotected, um, uh, uh, uh morphine, uh, uh, penile, um, surgery. Administration. <laughs> Administration. <laughs> and what? In and out, done? Just in and out, yeah. It just administers the, 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 your, your, your ass takes on the morphine from the doctor. <laughs> it's the only way, really. In uh, and out. Yeah. <coughs> in and out. Up once. Okay. And out. And it'll definitely work. Uh, you, oh. you will, the pain will go away. No side it'll effects. It'll be pleasurable, no side effects. Anything. No side effects, no. I'd probably call Aunt Nora and ask if she's had it yet. <laughs> <laughs> just return us back to where we started from because in Ricky's introduction he said that modern man in a sense with all the technology we have can play God and this is something which is huge now a lot of yeah. ethical discussions about things like stem cell research should we be interfering nope. in what should be a godly terrain you say no straight away straight away no I think uh it's sort of like messing about now I think that's the problem we've got the tools and they like to use them and that's what happens. I've got a sander, uh, for Christmas and I, I, I can't wait to sand stuff. I can't even think of enough things that need sanding, but I want to use it. And Not scruffy sander. And that's the problem, innit? If you've got the tools, you can't have the tools and say, pop them in the shed. Well, no, I don't want to use them. Got a new tool, eh? Right, well, sand the shed, though. That's the problem, innit? All these, all these, you know, medical people. Mm. Um, that's what happened in the Hulk, innit? Yeah, well, again, that's, I'll just say, that is a work of fiction. 
the Hulk. Yeah, but with all fiction comes the future. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, so, certainly uh, in science fiction. <laughs> but the problem is, this is what I say is the problem. We can sum it up here if you like, and then go it on. sums it up. Go on, no, this is a, you, is you, it a quote from someone? Well, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it is one for sound bites, and um, it just no. saves a lot of time. Uh, Carl's quote: you don't have to study the book or anything. <laughs> um, so uh, let's let's sum it up there. Let, 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 we're going to end it here, but we're going to end it uh, oh. with uh, with this quote from Carl Pilkington. Carl, shoot me. <laughs> People are living too long. <laughs> okay, that but wh that's your summary of medicine. Well, yeah, it is medicine. because it's kind of now. You see, I agree with medicine to stop pain because it's, it's depressing pain. Mm. Stop the pain. Mm. Um, I'd say, I'd say, as soon as we sorted that out, and we started saying, "Do you want a new face?" That's way over the line. Yeah. No one should be getting a new face unless they're really disfigured. Yeah. But those are the people who are getting new faces. No, they're not. There's people messing about. Yeah, no, there's people- Well, plastic they're... surgery, but that's yeah. people's own choice. They're paying for no, it. It's, it's ridiculous. I know, it's, but not, it it's not taking it away from other people, is it? Yeah, it is, because the person who's messing about with someone's face could be doing something no, else. No, because they're plastic surgeons. They're privately employed. Yeah, but they shouldn't be. They should be sorting about? someone else out who's got a little funny head. They shouldn't be messing about with someone's health in London. Trying to get some free treatment. Get some free and it never looks right anyway. They spend no. all that money, it never fits properly. Yeah, no. but you, you, this, fish, is, this is what annoys me about Fish lips and, uh, and that, 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 little, that yeah. stupid little skeletal nose. You'd be uh, better off changing the head, all of it, rather than messing about with the face, because it never fits properly. Mm. But you've completely, as a form of summary, you have completely gone off the tangent. No, no, that's no. not a summary yet. Sum right. up. I have one right. more go. So this is this is the real one. Yeah. Okay, Carl. Sum up our global guide to medicine. Go. Uh, today's cure. Hmm. Mm. Today's cure is something like it's something like that. It'll be something like uh, mm. today's cure is tomorrow's headache. It's all right. That's all right. Because what I'm saying there is, Go on. we can come up with with stuff. Mm. We can come up with a tablet to get rid of headache. Mm. Tomorrow, your headache's gone. Your legs hurting. So today's cure is actually tomorrow's leg ache. So today's cure is tomorrow's leg ache. Yeah. But ages ago, Go I on. said to you, don't solve problems. Yeah. Because a problem solved is a problem caused. <laughs> I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! I don't remember that quote. <laughs> but. Okay, so, so finally, in summation, you were, what you said was. So. Uh, okay. At the end so, of the day, we've all got to die of something. Right. Now, Albert might come in. I'm a doctor. Right, Albert, how are you today? What's what's wrong with you today, Albert? Uh, oh, I've got an inflammation of the, uh, testicular <laughs> region. Right. A, oh, my scrotal sac is all, it's all stretchy and swollen, it's pustulating, and it's causing the penis to, uh, to be all red and inflamed, and, and that spread to the anus. Uh, right. <sighs> Take these tablets. Right, where do I put them? Where do I put them? Just have them with some water after a bath. Okay, I'm not going to have a bath. I can't have a bath of these, because the, 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 if, uh, honestly, you see these get in a bath and they start bubbling with the- Yeah, like uh, I say, just take the, the tablet. I think they're, I think, I don't know what it is, but it's, look at it, it's yeah. like a mess, it's like quite a mess down there, I can't- <gasps> oh, well, take, yeah. take the tablets, <laughs> oh, take the tablets and yeah. come back, come back, <sighs> some, you know, in a week's yeah, time, well, let me know how it goes. Okay. Right? Right, so you know what it is. Let's imagine that that perfectly normal scenario <laughs> has happened. <laughs> what, what, what is your point? Right, we'll come back the week after. Yeah. The problems downstairs will be sorted. Yeah. At the end of the day, he's 76. He's going to have something else wrong with him. I do another check on you. And even though you, you, you sack is sorted, they're not, it's not, they're not quite right, to be honest. No, but they're better. Yeah, uh, well, it, it, it swings and roundabouts yeah, because well, that's, that's the, life. The, the, that's life, the, 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 the penis is, is, is much more functional. The, the testicles are, are really, the, they've lost all their skin. It's just, a, it's just like a bag of spaghetti just hanging on the chair. Mm. And the arse, 
the, the arse is the itchiest arse I've ever had. I've had to, at some points, <gasps> I, I've got blood under my fingernails, it's good in my anus. <gasps> Sorry, it's not completely cured. <gasps> and this is why no one wants to be a doctor anymore. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed the audiobook, A Ricky Gervais Guide to Medicine. Coming soon, Ricky Gervais Guide to Natural History, out February. the scholar and political theorist John Shah, the future is not a result of choices among alternative paths offered by the present, but a place that is created. Created first in the mind and will, created next in activity. The future is not some place we are going to, but one we are creating. From the schoolboy dreaming of big adventures to the scientist envisioning groundbreaking discoveries, we all care to imagine what the future will bring. Many people have attempted to predict the future, others to mould and control it. But what do we really know of the future? How does the past inform it? And what educated guesses can we make about the shape of things to come? To discuss these questions and more, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, award-winning writer and graduate of the University of Warwick. Hello. And Carl Pilkington, fucking mong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One prediction for the future, Carl, is from uh, an academic study, what, what the world will be like in about 75 years from mm -hmm. now, and uh, a big prediction they're sort of sure of is that androgyny will rule. There'll be so little difference between men and women, apart from the biology, economically, socially, it won't matter who the biggest breadwinner is, that's already being phased out. If you're in a traditional heterosexual male-female couple, it'll be who stays home, who earns the most or whatever. It won't be governed by, by gender. Um, and that's getting less and less anyway, as it is now. But soon you won't even need a female or a man in your life. You'll just need the egg or sperm. Mm. And uh, you'll be able to have any coupling you want or, or not. Thoughts, Carl? That, that isn't what I've heard. What were you heard? I well, heard that. So you got, you, you read a, an academic study, Rick, but, yeah. but let's find out what Carl's mm. been reading. I heard we're, uh, you know, we're all gonna go all boy. <laughs> different point though, isn't it? That's a different, different point. point though. Not listening to a word uh, Ricky said. But no, it's on. just, it's just, uh, if we all sort of go ugly, uh, that will sort the population problem out. He gets an extra syllable in the word ugly. Mm. Ugly. <laughs> Ugly. Ugly. Yeah. So that down just sorts the population out because people aren't sort of having it away. Left well, right and well, no, well then that, that doesn't sort of, what do you mean? Sorry Rick, I don't understand what the hell he said there. Is it's, he, are you so saying, many... are you saying because everyone's ugly, everyone won't want to have it away more with the ugly person? Yeah. Okay, I still don't, you seem to understand what he's talking about Rick, I'm still confused. But what, what, he, what he thinks is that if we all, if we're all ugly, then we still have this strange paradigm of beauty that won't exist, so we won't fancy anyone as no, much. No, no, they'll still sort of fancy, because at the end of the day we're animals, aren't we? Yeah. So we'll still have it away, but yeah. not as much as they'd like to do now, because it's all based on looks. Sorry, so, uh, but what's this got to do with what this world like? Describe, you, because describe Ricky's a typical town or, or country It's setting. exactly, right, imagine London, you've still got the gherkin, you've still got the big wheel. That's, right. it's just everyone's ugly. Right, and they're, and they're doing all the same jobs, are they? they Everyone's just, still, yeah, uh, the so world's what, got to carry what on. What do they look like? What's ugly? Just imagine, like, yeah. I, haven't you ever seen anyone when you've just gone, look at that. Yeah. Right, well, like, like that. Yeah, but hold on. It's ugly by today's standards, is it? So I throw forward to 75 years, you'll go, oh, everyone's what we call ugly, but what's happened to society? What do they think of everyone? They won't suddenly go in, oh, and it's annoying, we've got, we've got uglier. Because it's not no, like a strict- No, because we have got better looking, haven't we? If I look back now- Yeah. At a school photo- Yeah. 
you look out my class and you go, what, what was going on then? <laughs> well, you can't tell the difference <laughs> between some of the girls and the blokes. No, but that's not true. Because it is, honestly. You that's look at fashion it and, and nutrition. Stuff. And I see that, yeah, yeah, when I see an old episode of Bullseye, I think, Jesus, the men look like right. rakes with right. no teeth and a moustache. Yeah. And, they're, and they're, they're, they're bald with their hair down the, like a paedophile. And he goes, now how old are you? And I'm like, 52, 52. He goes, I'm 22. He goes, what? Yeah, but that's more because of the sort of people that used to go on Bullseye. I mean, you know, <laughs> Paul, exactly. Paul Newman was never going to pop on Bullseye. <laughs> no, exactly. You know, because he was and actually then, a plumber from, you know, yeah. Essex. And then think of the people that he grew up with, well, where he, I mean, some of them live in holes now. Yeah. So, you know, I don't think you're, the, the class of um, Pilkey, 1982, doesn't really count. When he said, we've got better looking, I thought he was going to talk about cavemen. <laughs> not yeah, his school not photo. I mean, what happened there? there? There's been no evolution in that time. <laughs> what are you talking about, Carl? We've got better looking now, haven't we? I wonder if he's confused it with the, uh, the paradigms of of beauty have changed, haven't they? So in the 50s, Marilyn Monroe was, was considered, you know, very desirable, whereas that body shape on women, yeah, more recently, has become, has become less, you know, it's yeah. lots of skinny women are seen as a paradigm of beauty. But, so that has maybe changed. But we will change. Yeah, we'll change not in 75 little years. I've mentioned before about, uh, your little finger. There'll come a time when that'll go. I've said, I've watched it. I've kept an eye on what my little finger's doing. <laughs> Sometimes it does nothing. It never helps out. All the others are grabbing all the stuff. That one just sort of sits there watching. So you could get rid of that, and I think that, that will go in evolution. <laughs> think of the books he could have read when he was doing that, when he was monitoring his little <laughs> finger. I've, I've been watching my little finger. But again, it's what you mean. Like, 75 years is nothing. The only thing that changes uh, in 75 years is trend, fashion, economics. The gene pool doesn't change unless there's been some sort of really weird mutation due to an external force. That I, I, I don't know. For things of science fiction where we all accidentally drank plutonium and got three eyes and one leg. It doesn't happen that fast. I've told you before, if you shaved a caveman, he's basically us. He's basically us. Well, he's basically Carl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's the little finger will be, to let me tell you, millions of years. Um, I think what's more interesting about the future, Carl, is the fact that technology integrated with humans will be fascinating. So, for instance, they're talking, you know, about the fact that in the future we may even be able to have chips in our head that allow us to access the internet or an equivalent of it directly, mentally. Not, not so. Not, imagine I was that. to say, not not French fries. But hang that. on, though. Well, at what point are we us then? They are. This is good. Go on, go on, go on. No, because if I if I can go on the internet at any time, then that's going to know more than me. What does that mean? Okay. When I don't know an answer to something now, mm. which is a lot of stuff. Really? Go on. You yeah. watch University Challenge, yeah. and the stuff them them kids on that now. I was just thinking, wh where have they stored that? Where's that gone in their head? Mm. How have they left that somewhere and it's just sat there waiting to be used? For me, if something doesn't get used within a time period, that's it. But again, it's forgotten again, about. okay, that's application and, and, and training and all that. I don't but, think, I think But that, basically, mm. you're, you, you've got about the same hardware I haven't, as those honest people. Honest to God, I haven't. I know I haven't. Your, your brain capacity it, it, it's is It's not the huge. same as theirs. It's not the same. Well, you might not be what's considered as academically intelligent as them, but again, uh, an awful lot of it is, you know, nurture more than nature. Um, your brain's good. Your brain is up there. Don't worry about that. Well, it isn't. But listen, so what I'm saying is, if I want to know the answer to something, I go on the internet. Yeah, right. Now, if I've got a chip in my head with Google on it, yeah. I'm never going to use my head. I'll just be forever on Google. <laughs> Use my head. Well, I'm not but because what do you what's think the your point? Head is, though? Because well, I'm going to get it wrong. The chances are I'll get it wrong. So divert that. It's like saying no, no. You can't bypass the brain straight to Google. When so you're having a chat socially, it's not like they're going, "All oh, right, Carl, how are you?" And um, you're not there. You're asleep, and Google's talking. Oh, I think you'll find that they no. Uh, only do you want to see naked ladies? No, come this way. <laughs> no, only for questions though that I don't know. But what I'm saying is because I don't know a lot of the answers, mm. I'll just say forget it. Leave it connected to Google. 
<laughs> so, no, no. so then I'm well, not me anymore. Well, what are you doing? Where's you gone? I'm looking at Google. <laughs> <laughs> so it is you. No, but what Steve just said is, we'll have a chip in our head. Mm. Right. That can access the internet. Yeah. Mm. So why why bother using But you're the still knowledge? the go between. You're you, Carl, are the go between between the internet and whatever your mouth says. But you can't says. beat the internet. Yes, you but can't, you're he the knows go everything. So you're accessing the information like it was part of your brain capacity, but you're still processing and using that information. But, but, but hold on, where does Google get the information from in the first place? Someone on uh, one of them bright people on a university human, challenge has put being. it on. Yeah, yeah, a human being. So, but I'm going to get lazier. I don't watch a university challenge and go. I want to be like them. I'm going to start reading books. I've accepted. I, I'm never going to be like them. I can't play along. All I tend to do is, is, is. I, I say to Suzanne, right? So every question now, I'm going to have egg as the answer, <laughs> and I'm hoping that one day. <laughs> what an amazing game! <laughs> what an amazing because, intellectual oh pursuit God. that is! What a lucky lady! <laughs> what a Suzanne! What a Suzanne's after that! Well, she just sees if it works. She just plays along, and then I'm saying, "Oh, it might be this one or whatever." I but remember. I love that because well, I remember once it was about um, five years ago. Uh, Carl and Suzanne were around near Christmas, and me and Jane were there. We were playing different parlour games um, like charades and that. And then one game, you have to do that thing where you have to beat, and you have to do animals, and you have to go. Uh, First one is A, then B. So you say aardvark, next one goes beaver, next one goes cat. It came to Carl, he panicked, and he went egg. <laughs> 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 and he was on F. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're sat there watching University Challenge, and on a good night, it's, you know, well-known jeweller of Fabergé is well-known for his jewel encrusted war, <laughs> egg. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Humpty Dumpty is commonly pictured as a living egg. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Oh. It's gonna, if you keep saying the same thing, eventually, it's yeah. like a broken watch. Carl puts his head right, looks like hay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've just got more chance of getting it right. Sure. But um, also, he told me uh, wh when he plays University Challenge, um, uh, he says he's given up ever trying to get an answer, so now he tries to guess who's going to answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> Another great day! <laughs> Suzanne's roped it on! That's really <laughs> cool. How do you do with that? That's not- I'm normally alright on that. <laughs> <laughs> there's got to be something else. <laughs> there's, there's another, there's another, like there's another evolution thing though. When you watch brainy people on that, or wearing glasses. Yeah. Mm. What does that tell you? We are reading too much. We're well. wearing the eyes out. Mm. And that, y you can't argue with that. Because the evidence well, is there. Can. Most people on University Challenge, which is a quiz show if people don't have that in the country, <laughs> The, the, it's the brainiest quiz of all time, and it. To be honest, I don't know why they don't go on. Who wants to be a millionaire or something? Because they'll get a better prize than. A, I what do they win on University Challenge? Because they'll be stitched up by a question of uh, who's in Ollie Oaks. It will be the <laughs> yeah. But that's I, the snobbery be, as well. It'll be what character does Andy Lincoln play in this life? And they won't get it. And you'll go egg, <laughs> and you'll be correct. <laughs> but but that's uh, that's the thing, isn't it? This snobbery on like braininess. The way that <laughs> if you're if you're a specialist mm. in uh, I don't know what something well no don't help him go on finish just you've started a conversation you're halfway through a sentence you've got a point you to can't make. bail out now okay say if you're a specialist in uh, go on Latin tattoos <laughs> <laughs> Latin <laughs> tattoos I don't know what, that is. what Latin tattoos I didn't know you wanted something so specific. So that's a tattoo you have on your arm with cogito or some underneath, or is it is it a Just tattoo? Any sort of, well, it's the only reason Latin's still alive, isn't it? Right, right. Tattooists. Is so it? you go on, you go on mastermind. Yeah. And people will go, oh, he's clever, isn't he? Mm. You got uh, you got forty correct in sixty seconds. Yeah. Now, if you go on and say <laughs> any questions <laughs> about Coronation Street between nineteen ninety and ninety two. People go, no, oh, he's a bit of a knob. Yeah. Because there's a snobbery to yeah. education. Yes. 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 There is. But a question is still a question, isn't it? Well, it, to a certain degree, although, y yeah, that's fine. Um, but there's but no application to knowing who played Ina Sharples, whereas presumably there is something useful 
in um, well, not perhaps Latin tattoos because no, we don't. We none of us understand no, exactly what no. that is. But um, if you're a, if you're a knowledge, you have knowledge of you know uh, astrophysics. Obviously, that's going to be you know, as Ricky says, it's going to take more application to become an expert on that than watching Coronation Street twice a week. But it's still information that you've had to learn. You've not learned it, have you? You've just no. sat down in front of the telly and it's just piped into your brain very directly and very easily and enjoyably. Let's say the people working on that microchip that one day you'll have in your brain, mm. are they not doing something more interesting and valuable for society than, uh, than the Coronation Street fella? Um, no, because Coronation Street is, he, that fella who knows a lot about it, he's, at least he's enjoying his, his time watching that. Oh, well, I'm saying he's not enjoying it. So he's enjoying it. But, you know, a brain in a jar can be enjoying it, if it doesn't know it's a brain in a jar. Right. So what are you, what are you asking me? But we were talking- <laughs> 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 Didn't seem a difficult point, what we were saying. We what were I saying, mean is- Okay, one more go. What right. do you mean? The chip in the brain. Mm. Isn't part of filling your head with stuff the journey of filling it with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Whereas if I just, if I'm, say if you had a baby, the baby pops out, he cries a bit, they go, right, we've got, w what do you want your baby to be interested in? And you say, I, I want it to be, uh, a plumber. You go, right, <laughs> when it's two, we're gonna stick a plumber chip in its head. Right, yeah. It's not right, is it? No. No. I don't know why you chose plumber, either. <laughs> well, we still need plumbing. Yeah, I know we do, but- the, It's uh, yeah. odd that they would have chosen plumbing they've got such- <laughs> oh, yeah. Such it's kind of small it's what, it's, it's what ambitions for It's what babies. his granddad did, and he, he you know, he, they want the sort of the thing to go through the business. They own yeah. a plumbing business. <laughs> They want, they want the baby to carry on the business of the they want, they want the uh, baby to be able to plumb. It goes on now where, <laughs> where parents force the kids into riding horses. And you mm. see the kid without the parents about and you go, do you like horses? And they go, no, not really, we're being forced to get on a horse. Yeah. Can't stand them. Yeah. And people would go, that's wrong. The mm. kid should have the freedom to decide if he wants to get on a horse or not. That's right, yeah. Well, what about this chip in the head? But you've made this but you've up. you've made the scenario they're, up. They're not putting chips in babies' heads. I thought you said they were. No. What, no when did I say that? that? No, no, no. I said that. I, I think Steve's one, I don't know, I haven't read it, but I imagine he's saying it's the next step in convenience with technology and, and, and an interface between a human and uh, a research tool or fun, you know, computers went from being the size of a room to a thing you can wear on your watch. So the next step may be, oh, you, you won't forget your palm top, you won't forget your iPod, you won't forget get your laptop. It's it's in there, it's an interface. I know, but it makes us but, lazy. But but you you straight away thought that now <laughs> that, that, that it went to some sort of weird um, uh, laboratory where it's all white and there's just a, a doctor uh, and he's everyone's in a silver suit, right? And they go, we're removing your, your the self. We're removing the self and putting in chip. <laughs> you are now computer boy. <laughs> Yeah, it's I want to watch Coronation Street. Well, you won't in a few seconds. But <laughs> I hate Coronation Street, me. Carl, it's not a question of. It's not that. It's not that Google is now Carl. Is it, Carl? it looks <laughs> like it looks like Carl, but it's just spamming, you know, little pop-ups about offers you can buy and all the cheap holidays here and there. <laughs> He's not the man I'm at it. <laughs> right. Look at it like this. Jesus. Look, I see it all the time now. Go on. You go. Ooh. Where are you going to someone? And they go, I'm going to, uh, Dorset. Hi. Oh, aye. Right. What road are you taking? Don't know, I'll just pop on the sat nav. <laughs> now, mm. that's a start, isn't it? Okay. Let's act that out with me, okay? Um, I'm going away for the weekend, Carl. Are you? Yeah. Where are you going? Dorset. Oh, yeah. Uh, how are you getting there? Uh, car. Oh, right, yeah. Well, which, uh, which way are you going? Um, don't know. Why, why do you want to know? Oh, well, just, just making a, just making a friendly chat. Just, you know, I'm, I'm interested in geography. Which way are you going? Well, I don't know, really. I've, I've got a sat-nav in my car, and Ooh. I'm getting there, and, what do you know, what, 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 what easy, isn't it? Well, I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a pigeon. I don't... Have I mean, you got an A to Z? Well, well, yeah, but it's, yeah, it was a, on a computer with the A to Z. What's the difference between looking at an A to Z and... and lazy, it's been lazy, though. Not really, no. No. Why? Why is it any different that I've got it computer eyes so I can go along? That's a bit dangerous, isn't it? It's a bit. 
Don't look like Zeb when you're driving along. Ty, who are you talking to? Because we need to hit the road. We need to get going. What is this? Uh, uh, this fucking idiot who wants to know what road I'm sorry. taking, which is a fucking boring thing who, to ask. Anyway. Sorry, who is this twat? Because we really got to get going. He's a fucking dickhead. Who, 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 I think he's an A to Z salesman by the time. I mean, we're well, just, just, just telling him we're using the sat nav because yeah. it's the quickest, most efficient way of doing it. It's the quickest, most efficient way of doing it. No, but but look, look, what's happened? Who the fuck are you? Would Columbus found America? If he had had a sat nav. Yes! No, he wouldn't! He'd have put in America and he would have taken it he to wouldn't, America. He wouldn't. He only found it because he got lost. Now, if everybody d just but goes- Hold on, hold on. How would he, an undiscovered country, <laughs> be on a sat nav? No. Go on. But I, I just What's mean- What's the difference between the sat nav and the map in that regard? Because I've found some lovely little cafes on roads I've never <laughs> been on. <laughs> From finding oh, a continent to a little what? cafe. I love that. I love that. Little greasy spoon. I am, I am off to discover the unknown world. Where are you going? Well, I don't know yet. It's the unknown world. <laughs> what are you taking? Just a uh, boat that all lazy swim, you can <laughs> I he's love the fact that he's so Luddite now, he's annoyed at the sat-nav. I mean, you'd have probably given Columbus a hard time, or got a compass. Don't you know where North <laughs> is, you twat? <laughs> I just think there's something in being lost. I never feel lost. I just think, oh, I've had a diversion. <laughs> <laughs> because you find you find new things. I'm forever well, going down. Suzanne's asking the French peasant where oh, the. I uh, just think you know Columbus. All right, what's the most interesting thing you found when when lost? Uh, like I say, they normally I, I found a shop that was like a fancy dress shop. Amazing. Do you need fancy dress stuff? You never go Columbus. You never went and bought a sat nav. <laughs> went to Dorset for the weekend. <laughs> you never go out. Why do you need a fancy dress shop? That sounds like the one thing you would hate. Is just, fancy dress. Yeah, but I like looking at the. Uh, they have like a space helmet in there. Right, so you found a fancy dress <laughs> shop. Where are you supposed to be going? That you got, you had time to get sidetracked and go in a. I think I was going to a meeting. <laughs> Amazing! That's the last time. I don't want to get lost. Yeah, you, you don't want to get meeting? lost. No, because I always give myself loads of time because I get lost a lot. I, I always give myself. Get a sat nav. Sat -nav. No, I'm. I'm just saying. You, that's that's how you find little treats along the way, and you, <laughs> next time you pass it, or next time someone says, "Do you know where the fancy dress shop is?" You can go, yeah, I do. You go, I have no idea because I was lost. No, I didn't no, know where no, it was. No, 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 no. normally oh, I well, I'm not going to tell you, lazy cunt. Have you got an AZ? Oh, that's harsh. Yeah, find it yourself, you lazy mm. twat. Mm. Or I might get lost. Good. You might find another one. <laughs> I'm ju I, it just goes back to the, the chip thing in the head. I think <sighs> you, you've got to learn along the way. We can't get lazy. We can't have chips in the head knowing how to plumb. That's what it's all about, isn't it? And, and making mistakes. If you make a mistake, I, I've done some wiring, got a little shock. Won't happen again. It will. <laughs> I've seen that experiment with you before. <laughs> so, what have you learned? You keep going on about all this learning. What yeah. have you learned? What have you learned? Okay, sum up. When? Sum up mankind's foray into the future. I want this. This will be the introduction to a book about the future, it will then be read in a hundred years' time and go, Carl Pilkington was the most prophetic genius that's ever walked the earth. These are his words from 2010. Just some predictions. Just, you predict think, no, just, just that you sum it up, just sum it up. Um, I believe, start off with, I, Carl Pilkington, believe that mankind in the future will. Okay, start off and with that. And then what, just have like a top five? Well, no, or just, just, well, maybe just predictions. Just predictions. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. So and then a little, and then a little thing to remember, and remember ye this. So I, Carl Pilkerton, predict that in the future mankind will. Uh, start off with that. Start off with that sentence. I've given you that one. All right, I'm Carl, and uh, the future. He's already gone off road. It's a scary road. place, <laughs> but the future's gonna happen. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. There's no getting away from that. Yep. Mm. 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 Okay. Your predictions are. Mm. Well, we're 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 all. Uh, mm. It's not a sound bite. Uh, no, keep going. Hang on, give me space. Okay, okay, this is in a book. I've, I've got to think about. I okay. Don't get it wrong. Think. Okay. Think first. Think a second, and then then say it. Okay. Starting from now. These words of wisdom will be inscribed on a wall of a museum one day. Proceed. All of a lavatory wallet. I think trousers are going to be stopped being made. 
Just because right. you see, you see kids now, they've got <laughs> pants around their ankles. They're going further and further down. <laughs> so I think, I think they're, they're, that's evolution, just getting rid of the trouser. Right. It's just dropping naturally. <laughs> <laughs> That's the evolution of the trouser because it's dropping incrementally well, you see, down you can the see arse. kids' underpants, so they're just dropping. Yeah. I think they'll get to a point when they just don't bother wearing them anymore. Right. Prediction one. Okay, That's an amazing one. They'll stop making trousers in the future. Good, okay. Good. Uh, we're going to get weaker. We with uh, that's already that's already happened. Mm-hmm. Uh. They used to say, you know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Now they're saying eat five fruits. <laughs> right. So we've definitely, that's, that's evidence. You can't argue with that. <laughs> I probably put that first because the guy's right. What's number two? So just swap that round. Okay. That's number Give one. Give him the pants second. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Okay, they number three. They used to say an apple a day keeps the doctor away. They used to say. They used to say, put your trousers up. Now they say, put them down, you can. I've never had such fucking trouble in my life. Number three. <laughs> right, number three. Oh, the scholars are now waiting with bated breath when they find yeah. this old scroll and they go, ooh, mm. what can number three be? Uh, <laughs> I reckon we'll blend all our food. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! No, oh, no, this the... is not me. He was going to make a point about race. Yeah. Is it? I never thought it would be. We'll blend all our food. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, like they do for babies, you mean? Just oh. yeah, I just think oh. when you think about all the stuff we eat now, cavemen mm. chewing on big lumps of meat. Yeah. yeah. We had wisdom teeth. Yeah. Mm. Now they say we'll take them out. You're not using them. Yeah. Why not using them? Because your food's soft. Yep. Mm. Sorbet. Yeah. Soups. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, everything's softer, Just isn't it? When you get an avocado, yeah. they say, is it soft? Everyone's squeezing the food before they buy it. Yeah. No one wants anything tough. Yeah. Mm. So I think, I think chewing is a sort of, sort of a thing, of the, thing of the past. We haven't got the time to chew. Everyone's like, hurry up, eat that. You don't mm. have to go out for dinner with Ricky. He's like, hurry up. <laughs> like, I'm still eating well, it. Well, he does blend his food, I think. <laughs> 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 okay, so blending food. Great. Uh, I reckon, uh, what else do we do now? So I've done teeth, mm. done trousers. I've come up with this idea. <laughs> These sort of like glasses, but you can live wherever you want to live. What do you mean? Everything that's real, you're not looking at that anymore. This is really the future. I'd put this at number ten. <clears throat> This is like... We're only doing five, fuck me. Oh, so the, you, what you mean is that you look through the glasses and instead of seeing what the real world, you see a tropical what paradise. What you want to see. So if you're, if, if you're a young kid and you like the idea of living in the urban ghetto yeah. with all graffiti on the walls and that, you can see that. Yeah, but hold on, are you walking around? Because you'll be bumping into stuff, won't you? No. Why not? No, what you mean is what? that the stuff that's there in the real world is being digitally reimagined yeah. in your glasses, so what was a nice country lane is suddenly now an it's urban ghetto. It's got loads of graffiti on it. Sure. Absolutely mental, pointless, would never work. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. one of the maddest so things you've ever weird, said. Really weird, that one. Yeah, It yeah. could be done. It, I it, reckon it could be easily Why done. would it be? Okay, okay, because that last one, that's number four. That's a load of bollocks. <laughs> um, so what's number five? There'll be, five. there'll be more letters in the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Cause, cause we're running out of words now, aren't we? No, we're not running out of no, words. we are. We are definitely no. running out just of using, words. No. It's using the letters we've no. already got yeah. and making new words. Okay, yeah. making, yeah. No, but we haven't got enough now. Of course we have. Have okay. you any idea, you could, you could have a word with nine L's yes. before you run out? Yeah, and they do in, in Wales and what have you. That's, that's because their, their alphabet is mm. shorter than ours. They've only got something like 24 letters over there. Right. But they go mental with the L. <laughs> <laughs> now, now what we do is, we've got 26 letters, mm. but we are now struggling. We're, we're not struggling, struggling at all. We, we, we are. 
We're not. No, it's a stupid... Buzz wallocks. <laughs> in shampoo. Now there's a word where they've gone, well we've invented something here. What? We've got something we're putting in shampoo. Buzz wallocks? Buzz wallocks. <laughs> you just made that up? No. no it's that, it's not they go, I knew, knew with Buzz wallocks and Sarah might are. Yeah. But that's a new word because they have to invent, they come yeah, with but, a new word. But it's a, it's a terrible word. Why? Buzz wallocks. <laughs> it's another word! Is that real? You've missed yeah, that, no, have you? I have, that's a word. Yeah. Now this is what I'm saying. So years ago when they came up with all the sensible ingredients, uh, Go on. sodium. That sounds, <laughs> sodium. that sounds all right. He likes sodium, he <laughs> doesn't like with that. Because it sounds like an in, an in, something in it, uh, like an ingredient. Well yeah, but that's because you're used to it. Is this a load of Boswell? Are you winding me up <laughs> no, the two of you? No, it's real. It's, it's, it's real. And that's because 26 letters, we've wasted them. Years ago we went mental with the, you know, pneumonia sticking a P on it. And, uh, there's loads of words where you go, what's that letter doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas now, they can't do that. They've gone, whoa, pull that back, why is that letter there? <laughs> and that's... now you've got stuff like abbreviations and stuff. Yeah. Let's not waste letters. Let's just control it a little bit. Mm. Uh, things, no. cars are called things like, you know, GTI or something, because they're going, well, I can't think of a word to call this. So they're giving them letters. Think of a word now. Think of a word that hasn't been made up. What do you mean? What? Tell me a word that hasn't up. been made up. All words have been made up. No, one that hasn't. That could be used. Say if I invent oh. something now to put in shampoo, what can I call it? Quick. Cranberry. No, it's too close to that. No, we can't get that past the advertising person. Scrimpton. Scrimpton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's <laughs> <laughs> like Ricky two goes and you accepted his second one. <laughs> well, I think we've uh, I think we've um, sorted out the future. Wow. Since obviously the days of Nostradamus, there's been many people who've tried to foresee the future. Uh, Carl, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but there's endless um, you know predictions. Apparently, there are other planets that may collide with ours. You know, there's some scientific basis on this, um, and obviously, I don't know if you've been f seen the posters for that recent film, 2012. Mm -hmm. Well, that's based on this notion of uh, some kind of Mayan calendar, which supposedly predicts the end of the world as, as being 2012. But if you knew with certainty that today was the end of the world, how, how would you spend that final day? I mean, this seems weird to me, but I've, I think I would, I'd like to experience a lot of the extremes of existence. So, for instance, I've always wanted to smash up a bar. Do you know what I mean? It's strange, strange, but I've always wanted the exhilaration of just smashing all those bottles, like you see in a film. But would you enjoy it as much, knowing that you're going to die in eight hours? I don't know, I suppose it's the sense of abandon, you know? I mean, maybe I'd murder a person. You know, wow. just say, you know, I don't know, but I think I'd probably go mental. Because that's Because I've always been a very reserved person, you know? I've always, I've never got into a fight, I've never caused a rumpus. Yeah, but that's a worrying thought, because... Um, we, we don't have to have the end of the world for it to be the end of your world, because a lot of people know that they're terminally ill, so mm. they don't go around smashing up bars and killing people. But I suppose I know there'll be no repercussions ultimately, because they're gonna the die next anyway. day everyone's gone, yeah, so there's so not gonna be mourning families. But, but then, uh, but then how dare you deprive that person of his last eight hours or ten hours of life? Um, I don't care, because it's the last day on earth. Well, so that's I true. Know, I know the moral guilt that I'll feel is over in, in a few hours. Morality isn't relative just to repercussion, is it? Because no, but you, the point you is can you do things without repercussion. But often people say, you know, what would you do it if you never got caught, or would you do it if you know, I, I, there is repercussions for that person as grave as they might be? Just because you feel that it's no big deal either way that they're only going to live another eight hours they might feel differently and you're saying well you won't care because you won't be around but then why do people care about their loved ones when they won't be around why do people get a will ready because my point is that they know that those people will continue to live for an in indeterminate amount so of time so you do care about the other person of course i do i oh, know of course i do but my point is knowing that everyone is going to be wiped off the face of the earth the following day all of those re all those repercussions are no longer quite the same um i'd find it hard to divorce myself from my morality that's ingrained just because it doesn't matter anymore yeah but i mean i I honestly, to me, it seems that we're, we're approaching uh, just the end, the end of all things. And so I'm saying that there's something about the fact that we're all going to end that somehow seems very liberating. 
What would you do? I've always wanted to kick a duck up the arse. <laughs> Obviously the future is relative, um, us talking now, the future is one thing, the past is another, but to someone in the past, we are in the future. So Carl, if you could go back into any era, okay, you are what you are now, you are you as you sit there now, your age, with all your memories and all your input and all your advantages on uh, ages gone by, and all your advantages over people gone by, um, where would you go, what would you do? Don't worry about ramifications, like if you squash a butterfly you come back here and we're all speaking a different language and- Yeah, but I don't, I don't believe all that. Of course you should. They should have picked something better than a butterfly. The thing about if you kill a butterfly, it, there's a volcano somewhere. Right. There. <laughs> Okay, what did that noise mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just passing the book, isn't it? It's kind of like blaming a butterfly. That, that, they only live about a day. Do so you blame it and it's dead anyway and there's no evidence left? It's a stupid is argument. Is that the theory? Is that, uh, the yeah, theory that you're blaming a butterfly for a volcano? I'm not sure that's it, is it? Yeah, it, no, it it's wafts about, its wings. It, and when it, it causes, wafts, right? When a butterfly wafts, if you stop the waffery, then the whole world has changed because there was no waft on a certain day. Okay, but that means that everything's part of the causal web. It's it's a model for determinism. So things do, yeah. Of course, things have an effect on everything else. Yeah, but I'm just saying that's a bad example. The butterfly doing its wings. Well, no. Something you know, that, that butterfly. That butterfly might have um, flown in through a car window and frightened someone, and they crashed. Use a wasp. <laughs> Why, why is that preferable? <laughs> because you do panic. I've been in a car when there's a wasp knocking about. It's terrifying. I, I, I've, yeah, I can see how that could cause a disaster. But a butterfly, you just go open the other window. <laughs> I love that you've won him over to that theory now, just by substituting a butterfly and a wasp. <laughs> you think back to perhaps when you were teenager or even before when you were growing up, you had visions I suppose of your own personal future and how that would play out, how you could change the way you lived your life in order to affect the future. I mean I was very, I'm very lucky in, the, in, in some regards in that one of my ambitions was always to be involved with comedy yeah. and um, I was very really quickly excited it? about that and I was lucky that I've managed to achieve that. A lot of people don't even know what they want from their future. Well the other thing is that when you dream of where you'll be in 20 years time, you don't change the future, you don't change the buildings and no. the, the, you just think of yourself sort of richer having a happier life. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So, um, And also I was always, I was always slightly more handsome in the future. <laughs> <laughs> like I kept imagining I would grow a little more handsome. Uh, people kept, so my grandmother would keep telling me, you, you know, you'll fill out when you fill out a bit. She was obsessed with me filling out, this is why she would feed me endlessly, the idea that somehow if I was yeah. less gangly. Yeah, it worked with me though. Yeah, my, you just, you really my, filled I, out. I filled out, yeah. yeah. It's funny because um, I still forget what I look like now in the present. Yeah. In my head, I still look like I used to look. Then I catch a little glimpse of myself in the shop window and go, who's that fat old? Oh. No. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm yeah. so much better. But you did have a long, you've, had, you've journeyed a long way. I mean, you, good looking lad, and you are, I mean, it's preposterous. Mm. I mean, everyone I work with or meet who's seen a picture of you as a teenager doesn't understand it. I mean, I pretty much look the same, you know what I mean? I haven't changed much. Um, I'm still a constant disappointment to myself in a way, you know? Mm. When I put on a tuxedo, that's the best I'm ever going to look, and I don't look like James Bond. Yeah. Whereas you at least had a moment where you, you looked around. I mean, this, honestly, it's Jane I feel sorry for. Because mm. I mean, she did not sign up for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've all, we've all no, changed. No, I've seen pictures of her in the past. She ain't changed much. No, I don't mean that. Whereas I mean, you. I mean, we've all changed. We've all, we all changed. Carl used to have hair. Yeah, but he had, uh, you, by your own admission, had it for long. You, you, you didn't have it hair for long, did you? You no, started going bald pretty wasn't, didn't want to hang around my hair. It was never, I've told you, it, it didn't feel needed, so it went. I never did anything with it. It was hair of a Chinaman, wasn't it? Even the hairdresser said, he said, yeah. you can do nothing with this. 
<laughs> so what do you mean? He said, it's just too, it's not so limsy. Limsy! Sorry, was that, that that's a- Limp or flimsy, I reckon. Uh, well, no, that yeah. Lim, Limsy is, uh, is a Chinaman, um, that, that, that um, gave his name yeah. to the, uh, the limp hair, uh, of the, of the Chinese So place. you think your hair bailed on you because it was not getting treated well enough? I think that's, I think that's true, I think that's right. how it works. But yeah, I know what you mean, you sort of, I sort of think about if I've changed and that, but I don't think I have that much. Mm. Still have the same sort of thoughts. Um, I like olives now, <laughs> which okay. I didn't like probably three years ago. Right. Mm. Wow. Um, but you can, if you eat four in a row, you get a taste for them. And I thought, go on, then I'll have five. <laughs> and I, I thought, yeah, they're all right these. <laughs> so that's different. But other than that, I mean, these. So what, you, what were your dreams and ambitions when you were young? Didn't have any. Right. It was kind of uh, five years old. What do you want to be? What was um, the thoughts of the future? I didn't, I didn't worry. At five years old, you're not worrying about okay. working that. Ten. What, what's your, what's your hopes and fears of all these years I met in thee tonight? I wasn't worrying about work till about, till about thirteen, fourteen. Just thinking, right, you know, people who are new had left school. They weren't getting work. And I was thinking, oh, I don't want to be like that. Um, that's when I did boxing. You know, that, I could have gone down that route. Mm. Got into boxing, didn't I? Mm. How many uh, fights do you have? Don't know, about three or four. Yeah. Uh, How long is it? Just when does brain camp damage kick in? I guess it can. Oh, I Very guess it can happen almost instantly. I mean, it must that must be must be part of it. <laughs> were you were you really? Did you really get a bad beating on one of those fights? Yeah, Leroy gave us a right good clacker in. Mm. Uh, clackering. Yeah, the thing is, your jab was a bit limsy, but Leroy's was clackering. <laughs> uh, then there was the dancing. I don't remember mm. this. What, what break dancing? Well, I did that. I did a bit of body popping. Yeah. But did you ever th really think that you might do this in the future? You did never know, do you? But did you at the time? Do you remember thinking, "Oh, I could, I wouldn't mind well, doing I this"? Well, I must have, I must have, must have thought that for me to go. Well, let's let's try and join, you know, Twiggy's dance club and all that and. Uh, my mum and dad always sort of, you know, if you want to give it a go, give it a go. With the boxing, uh, you know, me, me dad was saying, right, I'll get you the proper shoes and that, and my mum's like, don't, don't bother getting him them yet. Let's see if he sticks at it for like four months, because they were about thirty quid for Let the shoes. Let him carry on in my furry slippers. Uh, <laughs> then with the dancing, it was the same thing. I said, oh, I need some leg warmers and that. And, uh. These tights are just as good. <laughs> Come on, no, pop, dad, pop on your hands tights. My dad gave me um, like his. Uh, he, he cut like the, the sleeves off his shirt. Amazing. <laughs> and that were your leg warmers. Yeah. Amazing. But uh, it's funny when you're a kid, it don't bother you. But surely cut them off a jumper. No, yeah. I, I, I don't know why. I know it looked daft. I had cuffs on leg warmers. <laughs> <laughs> But, That's amazing! But when you're That's a kid, amazing. what did they you think they It and must have looked Lance Owen and Bowen doing a handstand. <laughs> 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 but then, you know, that didn't last long and then my dad, you know, it, I was getting older now and he's like... Dad needed his shirt back for a wedding. <laughs> yeah, as long as he didn't take his jacket off, it was fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> dad, I'm, I'm, I'm losing my hat, I need a hat. Dad doesn't need a bloody hat. Pop my pants on, Fed. <laughs> But then you've got to make sure you you try and get a job and school was sort of saying. So fifteen now. Every Bang on! Why did Twiggies? Why did you stop going down Twiggies? Well, it was short, wasn't it? Amazing. Oh, it closed down. It closed down. It had a load of toilet rolls in there. It'd been turned into like a storage unit. I've never really had a had like a dream. I've just bumbled along mm. because, the, the, like I've said, it's bumbled. that it's that thing of Clackered, sort of bumbled, um, limsy. It's like, call my fucking bluff. <laughs> There's no point sort of wishing for too much, because if you don't get it, you'll be fed up. So it's better just to sort of go, well, let's see what's around the corner. This is what I've said to you about a sat-nav system. Right. It? It's the same thing. Mm. Yeah, sure, I have the sat-nav. Type in where you want to go, and it'll take you straight there. Mm. But what I say is, use the back streets. Mm. Have a look around. Turn off. Don't go straight ahead. Turn right. Mm. The little dead ends. Yeah. Have a look. Well, you might get mugged. Have a look. Don't go down the dead ends. Why not? You've got to reverse back There's nothing there. Dead end. No, but have a look. Well, there's nothing there. It's dead end. What's the road doing there, then? Well, it's a dead end. It's yeah, dead but there dead. must be something down there. There's nothing. It's dead. It's just ends. It's just a wall. Right, so it's not a problem. Reverse. Well, don't go down there in the first place if you know it's a dead end. 
Don't tell people to go on a dead, dead end, they've got to reverse out. Difficult. Well, I'd say just have a look, you see, that's the difference between me and you. Right. I'd have a look down the dead it's end. It's dead end, then, no, don't worry, it's What's dead end. Dead nothing, mate, dead end. Rubbish? Just yeah, no, no, nothing. Dead nothing end. at all? Yeah, no, but go down there, dead end. Right, so I'll go, well, I'll just have a look for myself, because I don't believe you. Okay, well, go on then. Right, I'll have a look. Yeah. Oh, look at this I've found. What have you found? Box of money that you didn't know about. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is it could be. He anything. has still got the brain of a ten year old, <laughs> hasn't he? Money. He's still got the brain of a ten year old. Uh, I'm just uh, set your stall out. Right. So where's the stall? Where are you sitting the stall? Not in the because <laughs> yeah, there's no there's food no thoroughfare. Yeah, you want you want to be on this a sort crazy. of public highway. Where are you setting your stall out? <laughs> what are you selling? What are you selling? Well, this is what I'm saying to you. What are you selling? I'm first? selling a mixture of stuff. What? Like what? O all sorts. What have you bought it with? A bag of money you found in the dead end. Leg warmers. So you got you got le new leg warmers with um. Do you want? Have you got, do you want cufflinks with them? <laughs> what? Do you want cufflinks with them leg warmers? <laughs> well, now why would I do that? Well, you got a <laughs> smart, ain't you, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> so you're selling. Uh, what are you selling? In <laughs> so you, yeah. se you set your stall out. Yeah. Right. Now, yes. isn't it dangerous to sell oh. all the same product in that shop? Right. Okay, where's, don't know what where's the analogy going? This yeah. is a metaphor. I think it's a metaphor. Yeah. Um, or similarly. Uh, what, what, what are you selling? What are you selling first? Bang. No, two, three, four. No, but Quick, this is, is what I'm apprentice? saying to you. This is, is what I'm saying to you, though. I right. just said to you. Yeah. You. Yeah. Well, I don't know what you wanted to do. You haven't told me. But right. I'm saying. Do you want me to tell you what I wanted to be when I wanted to be well, at five years old? I wanted to own a sweet shop until my mum said, "You know, you got to buy the sweets first. All right? From ten, I wanted to be like a scientist. Fifteen, a vet kicked in. But Carry at some on. point, you jettisoned all of that to try and pursue a pop career. Twenty, I wanted to be a pop star. Twenty-five, I thought I'd better get a job. <laughs> well, at thirty, I did. <laughs> Me saying turn off the main road and do a right yes. is saying just have a look around in the same way that if you go into a shop- It was a metaphor, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. It was, yeah. Yeah. And in the same way that if you go into a shop, mm. you're thinking I'm getting uh, a quarter of bomb bombs. Right, a bomb bombs. <laughs> bomb bombs. Well, by okay. the time you get to the counter- You're clackered. And you get some licorice all sorts instead because you yeah. thought, actually, I forgot about them. Sorry, now this isn't a metaphor, is it? This is re this is a real shop now, isn't it? I just, uh, I just mean you're gonna be, you're gonna be let down. You're gonna be very very disappointed with life mm. if um, you know. What? What? Be what? what? If what? If what? If if what? If if what? The thing you're aiming for, yeah, doesn't happen. But what if it does happen? I'd like to take issue with this, because there's a lot of young people who listen to our podcasts, and if they listen to you this tripe, that if you try for something in life it won't happen, so don't bother, I think it's a bloody disgrace. No. Imagine if Leona Lewis had thought that when she went on the bloody X Factor. She wouldn't have got punched by that bloke in that- <laughs> 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 Well, that doesn't make sense. But you know what I mean, she would not be living her dreams. Yeah, but we don't know what Leona wanted to do. She might she have had a backup plan. That's why she's done it! She might have had a backup plan. Yeah, but she fulfilled the main ambition, which was to sing. That's why she went on the show. She didn't go in there because she thought I might want to work down a branch of Waterstones. You think she went in there and said, uh, "Quarter bomb bombs." She's like, "Oh, this is uh, X Factor." But she went, "Oh, go on then." <laughs> well, I was saying. Well, what about the, the 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 girl who looked like a fat baby? She went on there with a dream. It's not going to happen. <laughs> oh yeah. But nah. the point is, I'm not saying you all have to go on the X Factor if you're a hopeless idiot. I'm saying if you've got a little bit of talent and you pursue it, it might take you somewhere. If you want to be a vet or a doctor or pop star, you might have a chance. You may as yeah. well have a stab for it. They said, "Oh, that's all right. I'll just sit around in my underpants." Yeah, they're doing a new one, the X-ray factor, where you can actually, you know, become a uh, top radiologist. <laughs> But I've said this for for an idea. I think that's, they should do that because how many singers do we need in the world? You see, that's the thing. We're talking yeah. about the future. Yeah. I, I think it, we're not going to talk anymore. I think we're we're all we're, we're, it's going to be like living in an opera. The way yeah. things are going on now, everyone wants to sing. Yeah. Whereas if you did a TV program to try and get a doctor, you know, X-ray factor. You know, yeah. it's all about you know getting in young kids, do live surgery. You know, there's big queues anyway, people are queuing up to have operations done. Yeah. So you say, look, Elder, you have got a problem with your, with your left bu bunion. You can either wait for your proper doctor and hospital, but it's going to be a, a two year waiting list. Or you can or have Jedward do it. Are for you, you free Saturday night live? Because <laughs> we've got two 17 year olds who are going to do it. Hilda! She comes out. 
they, they saw... <laughs> little voice. I've never heard him do a little voice before. So I'm wait. Okay, I'm okay, okay. So this is okay. What is this? This is a talent show where people can have a go at being a doctor. A doctor. Yeah. Well, this is like something from the Middle Ages. <laughs> but they need, but they need volunteers who would rather have um, an apprentice, uh, someone have a go. Well, it's okay. not even an apprentice, it's someone no. with no training at all. Yeah. They learn how to do major operations in a week. But, no, not major ones, that's for the final. You do a heart <laughs> Oh, of course, yeah, you've got to build up that, sure. But you a build heart up. transplant for the final. <laughs> that's so anyway, amazing. So it's Hilda, and Hilda's not the person, she's not operating, she's just a person who needs a bunny no, she's removed. The, she's the foot problem, yeah. So she comes right. in, they have a quick chat have with her. Have a chat with her, how's your life been? Bit of cold play under her. She's yeah, going, yeah. oh, it's terrible, I can hardly walk and all that, and they right. go, right. Here's a fowl who looks like a baby. <laughs> and then... And you think this is a good- you don't see any problems with this so far? You've not- not identified any concerns yet? If it means you get younger people into other jobs other than singing. Mm. I agree with you. I think it's crazy that everyone now just wants to be uh, a famous, a singer or something, and we don't need them. They're just contriving it. They're, all they're doing is knocking the last one off the top number one. Right? It's just a factory. But I'm not talking about everyone should try and be a singer, am I? What I'm saying is, sometimes you're allowed to pursue your dreams, and they might be you may you may fulfil those dreams. Yeah, There's nothing Steve, wrong with that. Steve, it may be that you Steve. want to operate on a woman called Hilda or a bunion. Steve. Pursue that Go dream. On. But according Steve. to your negative. Views, we shouldn't even try and do that Steve, either. What Go I'm on. saying is. Go on. What's he saying? Leona was an example. I'm not saying everyone should try and be like Leona. No, but no. Listen. listen. Listen to his point, Stephen, okay. because he's got a very good point coming up. Here it now. comes. This is it. Okay. He hasn't said a, 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 a normal word yet, but he's going to say some now, and they're all going to be profound. People's dreams mm. aren't their own dreams. Oh, hold on. What do you yeah. mean by that? Okay, keep going, no, keep going, keep going. Let, no, 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 he'll explain. Don't, you don't need to ask any questions, he'll explain. Because they think they know what they want because mm. they see it on the telly. Mm. They see, you know, someone singing a song and they go, I want to do that. Yeah. So all I'm saying is, change the dreams. Mm. Change the dreams. Yeah. What? Surgery. They're watching that, <laughs> they're seeing Hilda happy with a better foot. The doctor's getting all the praise, they go, I want a bit of that action. That's what it's about. They don't want to be singers. Mm. They want to be known, they want to be famous. Yeah. So, fine, have a bit of fame, but do mm. some good, fix Hilda's foot. Sorry, was that the end of the point? Yeah, because all we've done, we've, we've changed the dreams. Dreams are- Well, um, you've hit on a good point there, because what is astounding is that when you, you know, um, people are inundated with praise for people who are just clothes horses. They are just skinny nobodies who don't do anything except have their picture taken and their role models for, you know, I'm not talking about, um, you know, anyone in particular, but it's just these people who, w uh, you know, want to be seen with other celebrities and marry celebrities and be a celebrity. People think that's an easy life because they're getting rewarded for it. And yet, someone who's stuck in the laboratory trying to come up with a cure for AIDS, they don't know or care about them. And Okay. Can I just point out, though, that if we're going to have a go at people being successful, making money and being well known for doing nothing of any value, I point you to the man sat opposite me here. <laughs> and that's, hey, I tell you, there's times when I, you know, lie awake at night thinking what was my dreams. Yeah, but- I have to be a little But I've got a new boy yeah. there. Hold on. And two houses. I'd love to, I'd, I'd love to be a little doctor. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's past me now, there's no way I can, I can go back. Uh, well. But it would have been brilliant, You're wrong. Right? Carl Pilkington! <laughs> Hilda! <laughs> what is it? What, what now, Hilda, what's up with you? I've got, um, I've got terrible piles. Um, uh, it's, there's some, there's some sort of blockage up there. I, I haven't gone to the, uh, excuse me, I haven't gone to the toilet for a week. Well, Carl, can you unblock Hilda's arse? Now live, unblocking Hilda's arse. Carl Pilkington! <laughs> I thought she had bad feet. No, the feet were, no. Jed would fix her feet. <sighs> it's a lovely job, that's why they stayed in last week. Her ass is worse than her feet. It's because she's been off her feet for so long, because she couldn't walk, her ass took the brunt of it, and it's just terrible. Piles of burst, and it's blocked up there, where all she just eats is cheese because she's so depressed. 
I'd, I'd just I'd probably knock it on the head there. I'd Why? Just say, because I'd just say, like going back to the the street thing. I've gone down the wrong avenue. Right. I go, this isn't for me. I didn't know I'd be, you know, eye to eye with this. <laughs> It's not for me, and that's how you find out that it's not for you by doing it. Right. But at least I gave it a go. So this the same as you had one fight with Leroy. You went along to a dance studio. It was shut. You've seen Hilda's ass, and it's turned you off. Once again, you just abandoned it. Yeah, well, that's a, there's have no a point. Have a go. Have a go. Just feel inside Hilda's back passage. Feel the blockage. Right. No, because the audience have already decided. They've seen a weakness in me. They're going to vote me out. No, so there's no point me getting dirty fingers for this. <laughs> <sighs> well, that's about it for the Ricky Gervais Guide to the Future. The next audio book in this series is the Ricky Gervais Guide to the Human Body. Look forward to that. Will do. It's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And the little round-headed shaven chimp that is forever Carl Pilkington. All right. Hopes you have enjoyed the Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Welcome to the seventh uh, Ricky Gervais Show on uh, podcast. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Stephen Merchant. Hello, and Carl Pilkington. All right. <laughs> now, talking of that, that's only five to go. Then, isn't it? Five to go in this series of twelve. Oh, still seems a lot though, doesn't it? We'll uh we'll take a little break. I'm sure we'll come back. Through popular demand, I'm hoping. Yep. I'm hoping to put that on the poster back by popular demand. Well, That's I'm it. hoping it's by overwhelming public demand. Which yeah, is exactly. My favorite. Yeah, yeah. As we're doing it for nothing. Yeah. We, we want to get a little bit of a pat on the back. Don't <laughs> exactly. We? Please. Somebody. Um Do they so give awards out for podcasting? Oh, if they do. Hoo hoo. Hello. <laughs> I am already died in my speech, baby. <laughs> um uh, I was thinking that everyone listening, um, if you want to register, uh, your email with us, we'll let you know when we're back on air, maybe later in the year. Uh, go to rickygervais.com and just, um, register, and then when well, I do a general mail out, I'll let you all know when Carl Pilkington is back. You are a good guy to these people, Rick. No sweat. <laughs> Now, there's been an awful lot of correspondence. Um, it's, I mean, it's, it's backing up there. We've got acres of it to get through. Um, it is a bit mental, actually, but it's very flattering, and, and thank you all. And people have, uh, sent such brilliant things in and spent so much time doing them. There's someone sent in this, uh, uh, uh mock-up of, we, we were talking about the, um, those Russian sort of iconoclastic artifacts, and someone's mocked up Carl Pilkington as Saint Carl the Bewildered. <laughs> it's it's brilliant. It's so good. Can we put this on the web? Yeah, I think let's put that up on um, rickygervais dot com, and that's from uh, Joe Murray in Philadelphia. We've also got one which is a little work of art from Ed Ferrari, and it's the three of us in a studio, and it's it's just great. It's a very flattering picture of you there, Rick. You look about fourteen. I know. I, I've come out very well in this. Carl, he's got a head like. Orange. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. And you, well, I don't know what you are. You, you, your foot, your your head is about two foot long, and in real <laughs> life, it's only eighteen inches long, isn't it? <laughs> so he's exaggerated yours yeah. a little bit, but it's a lovely drawing. We put that up on the web as well. Just uh, so, uh, everyone go to rickyjerrys.com. Everyone register, please, and we'll email you. And everyone um, uh, keep sending stuff in. So thank you very much, Carl. Joe from Bradford asks, what body parts can you live without? He wants to know. He's obviously having sleepless nights thinking about this. What? So, oh. <sighs> the, the, with a brain, <laughs> <laughs> he's coped this far. <laughs> so the bits that I've got now, if I had to get rid of, yep. one of them, yep. What wouldn't I miss? Yes. Um. See, I, I did a bit of an experiment on this, right? Brilliant. It's my job at home to to wash up, right? 
Suzanne does. She gives you all the really big responsible <laughs> ones. Yeah. She, so, she, she sort of like pays the bills and wires the house. And she go, you go, what can I do? And you can go, well you can go and play with the worms in the garden. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so it's my job to, to wash up and that, right? <laughs> and, um, I thought to sort of make it interesting and stuff. Uh, I thought, I wonder if I can do it, right? If I didn't have any thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> And so, what did you do? So I just sort you of sliced did off it. your thumbs. I, d I just sort <laughs> of held them in, and it's amazing how like it took me ages just having that that one thing gone. Well, it's part of our evolution, the opposable thumb. Basically, that's when we soared. Th 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 these are milestones in human evolution. The opposable thumb, the the forward facing eyes, the upright. Th these are these are massive things in in taking us out of the animal kingdom. And uh, one day, Carl, you'll walk upright. <laughs> But well, what do you mean about eyes facing forward? You mean before we got here, there was people who uh, whose eyes were looking in their head? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Is that what well, you no. mean? No, no, because when we got sort of uh, uh, binocular vision, where um, uh, we could we could you know because we were predators have a forward face. I'm, I'm going way back. I'm not just saying. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying chimps had eyes on the side of their head, but I'm saying big, big, major um, milestones in any evolution. Mm. Uh, I, 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 I lost you at evolution. I yeah. Think. So uh, when you were doing this experiment, washing up, um, you say that you found it difficult. It took you ages. So you you didn't you didn't just give give up once you realised how essential thumbs were. No, you actually washed up everything. I just think of Suzanne walking in and Carl's there, just covered in water and and fairy liquid suds standing on a pile of broken crockery yeah Lun p plunging his face into the sink every three, 30 seconds and just <laughs> swishing his head around <laughs> <laughs> but we talked about the the washing up thing before i don't know and uh most of their washing up and um i sort of look out out of out of a window so the sinks in front of the window yeah and that's why i quite like washing up because i can just look out onto the street see people going past, there's like a local homeless fella called Franco, you know, I look out that like, he's alright and everything. Sure. But I was looking across the way, right, and there's some, uh, sort of, there's some Chinese people who live on, in a flat, right, really small flat, and they're up till all hours, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> but they, they decide to back up at about half three in the morning and that, and they're always really noisy and that. But above them, there was some woman, right, who, um, the sort of bedroom is on par to our kitchen, right? Yeah. So I'm sort of washing up. Yeah. And I sort of look across and see see this woman with, uh, like, you know, no no pants on and that, no no bra on that. Naked. Yeah, just- That's the word you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's just wandering about you know, on that. So I was like, oh, what's going on there? So I ca carried on washing up and that, right? And uh, <laughs> kept looking and then- I was looking and she looked at me, right, so we made eye contact. <laughs> sure. So I was like, oh god, right. So um, what I thought the best thing to do was, was sort of drop me pants a little bit. <laughs> 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 just just a little bit, just like, you know, I had boxer shorts on and that, I thought if I just show a little bit of, little bit of sort of ass cheek, then it's kind of like, right, we, we quits. Right? <laughs> I don't understand the thinking. So, so Suzanne's watching the telly, right? I think she was watching Sex in the City or something. Yeah. She sort of turns around to see how I'm getting on with the washing up, right? <laughs> she sees me with like my pants sort of down a little bit with my ass out. She said, "What are you doing?" I said, "Don't look now." I said, "But there's a woman over the road, right? <laughs> with no pants on and that." She caught me looking. I'm just giving her a bit back. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that he explains the rules and Suzanne's meant to go, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. But I don't, so, so hang on, so you, you, you showed a bit of your arse, you turned, presumably, to show the arse, or well, waggled the arse out of the I woman. I had to lift it up a little bit on the, sort of, on the draining board. What, hang on though, what, um, what did she do? Did you register her reaction when she saw a bit of your arse? What happened? When she saw my arse? Yeah. Well then I wasn't looking because I thought, in a way, it, I don't want, I don't want it to look like, well, I've seen a bit of your stuff, here's a bit of mine. <laughs> I just <laughs> thought, at the end of the day, I caught a glance of you. It's only fair. You've had a bit back. You know, I'm not you making see, a big I, deal out I of it. You see, I genuinely think James Stewart missed a trick here in Rear Window. Yeah. This would have been, 
you know, a much better film, had James Stewart just popped his pants down. It would have given a whole new meaning to the to the title Rear Window. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's tricky though. I seem to be surrounded by people like that because I've told you before. There's the old woman across the way who's just sat there reading a the book. I, I look through everybody's windows like that. Uh, Remember that film, that slither, sliver, or something? Okay, right. When, when they've got video cameras. Yeah. I'm just looking onto everybody's world and just seeing what people are getting up to. It's not wrong with that. Brilliant. That's why I like washing up. <laughs> <laughs> the Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. <laughs> Chris has emailed a mantra for Carl. We were talking about famous mantras and sayings and things. Yeah. Never has a mank said so much to so many that means so little. Brilliant. So you can have that on your, uh, headstone. Rupert- Your little round headstone. <laughs> Rupert's in the Isle of Man. He says, I don't know if you knew this, Carl, but apparently octopuses' testicles are located in their heads. Yeah. But then, to me, that isn't that, that amazing, cos at the end of the day, an octopus- Really, all it is is an head. <laughs> <laughs> so everything it's got has to be it in the head. It has to be in the head. It'd look daft if they dangled down below. <laughs> right? So what, all it is is- I mean there's a lot Hang of on, facts- it, it, it'd look daft if they dangled down below. There's- I'm wondering again, that's almost- I don't think you should start sending them in, but that could almost be the B-side to, uh, B -side I could eat a knob at night. I could eat a knob at night. James Round says, Carl, if you could be anyone in the world, who would it be? Uh, dead or alive? Why would you choose to be a dead person? <laughs> <laughs> no, but but sometimes like there's people who, who are now now dead, but everybody raves about them. Like but who? but are you saying? But he he wants you to to live that life, not have been that person. Are you saying that if you chose Napoleon, you'd be Napoleon, but you'd be back to life? Um. Uh, walking around now on the bus, or he, he, you know, b it, it'd be the the eighteenth century, or what? What are you saying? Um, um, what what I mean is, if I'll just answer the question: Who would you be, and why? It's someone you no, admire, no, no. or you think had a good life. But, just answer but the what question. What I mean is, it's good to be remembered, like Winston Churchill is remembered yeah. as being a decent bloke. But I wouldn't want the asshole that he had, so I don't want to live his life. Right. But it's good to be. You'd like to be Winston Churchill, but you'd like to have a paper round <laughs> instead of uh, uh, saving the world. Yeah. Well, th that's that's what I mean. But is he saying who would want to? Whose job would oh. want to take on? It's not that complicated. The question is this: If he could be anyone in the world, who would Carl be? That's the question. That's all the information I've got. <sighs> a lot of responsibility on a lot of jobs, isn't they? So, <sighs> some of the names flowing through your head now. Um, I was thinking, um, Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> I never expected that! I never expected that! Um, he, he, so he, when he, what, so his responsibility in your mind is what? Saving, uh, people who are trapped in a building with terrorists? Well, yeah, may maybe, you know, his, his worries are different worries. With, you know, people who have a lot of money, come other worries. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So Bruce Willis, he's always going on these marches, isn't he, saying stop war and all that. But mainly because he's got, you know, he's got more, more to lose if there's a war. He's got loads of houses. One of them's gonna get damaged. <laughs> Whereas if you're poor, you've got the one house. If there's a war, it's like, oh, just end it all for me then. I'm sick of it anyway. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Sure. So with, Whereas with, Bruce, yeah. With, with, with successful <laughs> life and happy life, <sighs> there's more for you to lose is what I'm saying. Right. Like, at the moment, because I've, I've, I've finished a job that's, uh, that I've been at for ten years, right? I've finished working there, so suddenly I've got, me, me timetable's a bit out and I haven't got enough of a routine and I, I'm a man who likes to know what I'm doing, right? Yeah. So now suddenly- Five I've, until seven, washing up, with no <laughs> thumbs. I, I like, I like, I, I've sort of turned into like an old person. <laughs> where the little jobs that you shouldn't enjoy are now the main event. So but hold I, on, how old are you? You're 31, aren't you? 32. 32 and you're pottering around, <laughs> not knowing what to do with yourself. Well, like yesterday, Suzanne Shoes needed, uh, to go to the cobblers, right? <laughs> the word cobbler. I didn't even know cobblers still existed. I only ever see that in Christmas films made by Disney. Well, I had to go and do that, and that suddenly- Cause last time- last time you were going to the toffee shop. <laughs> yeah! And now you're going to the cobblers, next week it's the candlestick maker. <laughs> 
But all, <laughs> all I mean is, that suddenly is a nice little day out, I'm sort of putting my coat on, going, right, I'll go and, go and see the cobbler now, yeah. and go and have a chat. Tell me about the cobbler. You didn't come back with three magic beans, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the cobbler's, cobbler's alright, he's, you know, he's doing, you know, he's fixing cobbling. shoes and that. He's cobbling, um, he's cobbling all day. Have I told you about, uh, my Uncle Alf, who was a cobbler? No. I'm sure I told you about him. He's, he's the one who, um, he lived in like a, a bed sit and he had two tellies. <laughs> he had, he had like one that, that the sound didn't work on oh, and right. one that the picture didn't, but both together, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> oh, right, okay. So as long as he was watching the right, the same channel on both, sound came out of one telly and he'd watch the picture on the other. Brilliant. And he slept in like a, a rubber dinghy. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but he was- he Whoa! Was, you can't just let that slide, why did you sleep in a rubber dinghy? He, he just like boats and stuff and uh, he sort of- <laughs> Yeah, I like boats but they're better on the water. Beds are better to sleep on, boats are better to sail on. Well he just, he just had it in there, it's a bed set, it was really tight space. Boat set. He's got this, he's got it's this- He's moved into uh, a dinghy set. He's got this dinghy so he's thinking well rather than it get in the way I might as well use it. Yeah. Right? But he was a, he was a cobbler. <laughs> and he, he used to like repair like my shoes and that, right? Yeah. But he, he'd always sort of overdo them. <laughs> right, so- What do you mean? Like, uh um, <laughs> Fancy. Do you know like, Pimp My Ride on MTV? Yeah. Because he does up shoes, he'd go mental on them. What do you mean? There was a, the stereo? Yeah. Well no- There was it, horns? It, it, it's like- <laughs> Here Go comes Faster Stripes though. Yeah, so, yeah. Here comes Mr. Pilkerton, he's yeah. got the fastest shoes in the land. No, he just makes shoes that would last forever, so instead of putting like, one sole on, he'd put about five on. So you, it looked like one of them built up shoes. <laughs> <laughs> that you never see. He'd just put loads of stuff on, they'd last forever. <laughs> but they did. But they look like I, orthopedic I was, shoes. Yeah, yeah, it just like, the, suddenly I, I was like, six foot seven. <laughs> whenever he'd sort of sorted my shoes <laughs> out. <laughs> But he's, he's a cobbler and, you know, it's work that's, that's always, always there for you, isn't it? I uh, suppose so. So you went out with, to, 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 to take, uh, Suzanne's shoes to the cobbler? Yeah, so that's it, yeah, so I just took them to the cobblers and that, and that, that was a, like, a nice little job for the day. Um, I got a leaflet through the door saying, you know, if you want to walk a dog, you know, the, the rates are good, I don't know what they, what they pay and that, but I got a little letter, in my little letterbox saying, you know, if you, if you're free in the day, what, they pay you to walk pay, a dog? They pay you to walk a dog and that, and I thought if I do that, and get a paper round, two in one. Sorry, you just went from a job, right, where you were the head of production at a radio station, dare I say it, on, I, 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 can I discuss your... Uh, well, it was an alright wage, yeah. It was very good. But I wasn't happy, so it's pointless. No, I know that, but to go from the head of a department, on a lot of money to walking dogs and doing a paper round, I, I don't know. I, no, but I, it's about being happy, isn't it? I know, but that's, that's commendable if that's true, but it, okay. And All that right. makes you happier? Well, I haven't, I haven't walked the dog yet, but I'm just saying if I do, I mean, I'm not taking it if it's raining, I'm just <laughs> thinking if it's a nice sunny day and I fancy a potter, I'll, I'll go round to her and say, well, how much are you paying? I'll take, take the dog a walk and Sure. Stuff. But I, I can't believe some of the words that have cropped up in this. It's, 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 it's 2006 now. Potter, cobblers, toffee shop. It, it, it's, uh, it's very, very strange. Do you live in Narnia? <laughs> the Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Right, uh, a lot of people are sort of emailing in sort of brainy stuff. Brilliant. Right, uh, which, you know, the more the merrier. I'm, I'm happy getting all this stuff and if, if, you know, it grabs me eye, I'll run it by you and you can sort of tell me about it and that. And getting a lot of stuff about, uh, philosophy. Oh yeah. And all that. Um, Descartes is, that's another one that's mentioned on an email. Descartes. Yeah. The French philosopher. Yeah. What was, what was, what's your question? Well, he, he sort of cropped up on an email, someone said, uh, what do you think of, of him? And I was like, oh, I don't know. He, um, uh, famously, he, he pondered his 
his own existence uh, cogito ergo sum i think therefore i am he was thinking about that he was thinking how do i know all this is true everything around me and he thought uh well i can see it and i can smell it and i can hear it and he went oh yeah my senses can be fooled i could be dreaming and he thought well that's true i could be dreaming but if i'm dreaming then at least i'm alive at least i have some sort of consciousness so if i'm even thinking about anything uh, you know, I am, I exist. I think, therefore, I am. Cogito ergo sum. But we don't need to know the Latin bit. Why is everyone always going back to Latin? It was ages ago. <laughs> Why is that language always been... And w were Latin people always in a rush? Because they seem to be like words for full sentences. Why couldn't they just set at the time and say what they want to say? <laughs> and it's just like, what, what was love the rush? to teach Latin! What about Plato? Right, Greek. Right. Now, would you say he's he's a bright bloke? Yes, I would. I'd say he's a very, very bright bloke. Right, let me tell you this. <laughs> right? If he's that bright, you know how he got killed? No. Got hit on the head by an egg. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell! Well, he's right, not, he's not so clever then, is he? That's what I'm saying. Ooh. What's the story with the egg? He was, um, he was on holiday or something, right? <laughs> and... <laughs> he was on holiday. In Greece, probably. He yeah. was at, he was having a walk about and a bird was flying over the- over his- um, over sort of- This over bird was what? A great orc? What- what so, what size bird killed him a, with his was, egg? He was a big one, yeah. Was it? And- and the way they used to crack- well, uh, An ostrich on a hang glider. The way they used to crack the eggs open to let the kids out, they used to drop them on rocks. <laughs> Dropping its egg to let the kids out. You are a maniac. You are a maniac. And Plato oh. had a little bald head. Right. So from the top, the bird's there looking down, and it goes, "Oh, there's there's a little rock. I'll drop the egg." Hit him on the head, killed him. Now this is what I was saying before about. I mean, well, I'm letting too much go now because I'm so desensitised to his nonsense. I let him go. The bird saw Plato and said, "There's a rock down there." Yeah. Well, if he stop it, if these birds are killing people with bald heads, you've got to be terrified. So, but listen, this is what I'm saying though, right? Before about knowledge and that, how, how knowledge is, is hassle or success is That's hassle. That's that, I, now, now th I think that was Newton, <laughs> knowledge is hassle. Now, what, what, but why, why is, is Plato's intelligence got anything to do with the fact that this bird dropped it because, an egg on his head? Because he was intelligent and he's probably earning a nice few quid yeah. by giving out whatever messages he gave out, yeah. he could afford to go on holiday to exotic places. If he was working in a factory, <laughs> he wouldn't have been on this beach with big birds dropping eggs, <laughs> is what I'm saying. So, in a way, it backfired. His knowledge killed him. And that, I think, was Kierkegaard, his knowledge killed him. That's- I mean, where you got this stuff about him being on holiday? Well, he, he was- he, he shouldn't have been on the beach. He was only there having a break or whatever from doing what he does. <laughs> it wouldn't have happened if he wasn't on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I can't remember which show this was that we were discussing this, but we talked about, um, well-known phrases and, um, quotes from the past. We talked about Benjamin Franklin. And people have, uh, this is an email we've had saying, um, Carl, what do you take by the uh, well-known saying, a stitch in time saves nine. A stitch in time saves nine. Oh, a stitch in time saves nine. Yeah. See, uh, it's another one that I don't, I don't think I've picked up on a lot of these sayings that have been sort of thrown about willy-nilly. Um, willy-nilly. <laughs> willy-nilly. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Willy nilly. No, yeah. no, but I, I, again, it's one of them like like last week. I've heard of it, but but I've what does willy nilly mean? Just sort of like throwing it about all over the place. What? What, what do you mean? But what? Someone said, what? What does what does the term willy nilly mean? It just sort of means you know carefree. That's right. Yeah. So okay, but what good. does a stitch so in time say? So you nine understood nine? willy nilly. So you used a phrase. Yeah, it I mean, nice, you used it. Like... You said it willy nilly. But um, uh, <laughs> you you sort of got the gist of it. So what does a stitch in time saves nine mean? I I, I don't know. You what do you mean know? you don't know? Think about it. A stitch in time saves nine. Is it to do with sewing? Well, yeah, sort of. Uh, so if, it's not that clear. So it's if not... you got so if you got a jacket, yeah, and the seam starts coming undone. Oh, there's a little bit of seam. I'll leave it. 
Oh, it's getting worse and right, worse. Right. Soon your sleeve falls off. So, just need one stitch there, that'll do it. If you do it now, later you'll need nine stitches. And that, of course, uh, is an analogy to other things. If you leave something that, that, that needs attention or repair, it'll get worse. So do it now. Do it in time. Yeah, but they could have said a tile in so time saves nine on the roof. They just used a, you know, a sewing analogy. But it depends if you're busy at that point, because <laughs> if, you've got, if you've got something else that needs doing, that means that isn't being done because you're messing about putting, sorting out a hole in your coat, is what I mean. Yeah. You can't always do stuff straight away, so maybe, I don't know, I don't know if there's a, a, a sort of a middle ground where you don't have to do it straight away, but stitching- A stitch sometimes time, today. Say in 15 or whatever, meaning yeah. you don't have to do it straight away, but just do it before it gets really bad. Brilliant. Do you think yours is less poetic than, than a stitching time saves nine? So yours is, this is what you wanted to be a quote, right? Well, well, you could do it now, but if you're doing something else, then, uh, you know, look, well, well, don't do it immediately, but do it soon so it doesn't get really bad. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> no, but it's the same, that's the same way I treat most things in life. It's like, I never go to the doctors. Unless it's really That is sensible. Bad. That is very good advice. No. That's brilliant advice well, for anyone is, listening. Never go to the doctors. Unless it's really bad. But that's why a lot of people, particularly working class people, you know, um, die because they don't want to bother the doctor or they're mildly embarrassed or they don't know, um, symptoms, bad symptoms. Go to the doctor if, 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 you, if you're not sure about something. Like, you were terrified to go and have your prostate. Still not been. Not doing it. Why not? I wish you wouldn't talk about it, because now Suzanne will listen to this, and she'll go, oh yeah, you haven't been, and start dragging it up again. But why are you worried about a, a little, uh, a, a qualified I doctor? I don't know what they're doing up there. What? They what just pop are we in? They- <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about? They pop their finger up. That's what I mean, though. Why? Well, what, it's 2006. Yeah. Why are they still using the index finger? <laughs> what, would you prefer the forefinger or the thumb, would no. you? No, what I mean no! is, we've got- Or a thumb on a stick, some kind of thumb on a stick, you-, you Yeah, would you prefer it to a be- A mechanical thumb, a, a robot mechanical. thumb. Why isn't it just a little camera? Or something that- They, have, well, they put the camera up if, if they initially discover something. But just put the camera up straight away. If no, they, they don't need to. They pop the finger up, feel that the prostate isn't swollen, wiggle it around a little bit, up your, uh, 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 up your back passage. They, what I are you worried about? I, I don't think they, they need to do are that. Are you embarrassed? Are you age? embarrassed about being in a room with your trousers around your ankles and a little fella popping A his... little bit, yeah. Why? And the other thing is, it's not just that, is it? So, <laughs> you go in there, they check your eye out and that, which to me is the most important thing, because that's what keeps you going, isn't it? <laughs> right? Yeah! You've got to go there, you yeah. sat on the bus, stressing out, thinking, oh, in less than half an hour, I'm gonna have a finger up my ass, right? <laughs> what is the problem? And they go though? in, they check your heart, they probably <laughs> check your testicles and that. What's up with that? They check your testicles, yeah. That's yeah, but it's all building, and you, you sat there going, "Oh, soon that'll that'll be happening." Yeah, and that's what puts me off. So if they just came round when you were asleep, <laughs> Suzanne just let them in and goes, "He's over there," right? Yeah. And they crept up and went, <laughs> "Bang!" You, you go, "What are you that? doing?" I just don't understand why they don't teach you how to do it yourself. How can they- <laughs> Wow! How can they teach- Imagine you squatting in a corner with one hand on your bollocks and the other finger up the arse going, it seems to be alright. Carl, you don't understand the phrase a stitch in time saves night. I don't think you should be doing any kind of invasive medical research in your own human body. But- but then- Who the knows what trouble you're gonna cause? No, but then at you least- You would get stuck. Yeah. You would get stuck. If Susanna come out, your fist would be up your own arse. <laughs> Okay, I think it's probably time. I've just- let me just check my watch. Yeah, it's monkey news time. Oh! Chimpanzee that monkey news, ya! Right, last week we talked about, uh, you know, the- the one who- who was- who was good at getting up buildings and that for, uh, putting out fires and stuff, ended yeah. up working for the fire department. Yeah, not true, but sure. Yeah. But if, uh, there was, if the building had good grippage, he was right up there. Yeah, yeah, it's not true, but go on. So this week, anyway, it's about- it's more about tall buildings and stuff. Oh, yeah. It was this bloke who was a builder. Oh, right? yeah. And, uh, you know what builders are like, they sort of move about, don't they, from- from sort of building to building, just building. <laughs> well, yeah, well, once they've built it, the building's done and they move on to they build some more. Building to building, just building, yeah. So he goes to his next job and that, right? Who does? The builder? The builder. Yep. He goes to, like, the, the, the boss- The building. The boss- 
of this building who's building it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. And he- and he says what unto him? Do you need anything building? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. So anyway, so he says, uh, he says, yeah, yeah, there's plenty of work and that going about. Yep. He says, we're working on this one here. He said, uh, get going on it, like, there's your bricks and your cement and stuff, get on with it. Yeah. So the- so the- Any plans? So ah. the- so the- <laughs> Just build. Just- just start building. Yeah. Go up. To getting on with it and stuff, it's all going well. Right? Yep. Um, but he notices that there's someone working high up, mm. right, on, <laughs> okay. on the top bit. Sure. Because do you know, like, there's girders and stuff on these big yeah. buildings. Yeah. And he's still building and, the bottom bit, and which he's is still, weird. Yeah, well that's- that's the, the way they- they do it there, apparently, mm. just to sort of speed it up, work from top to middle, from top to bottom. Sure, you know that's- I mean? and that's where that's in the imaginary land. So we so put anyway. the spire on, and then we better do the foundations, <laughs> yeah. and then put some stuff in the middle to keep it up there. So anyway, he's- he's saying to, like, the other workers, he's going, what's- who's that up there? Who's that up like, there? He's, yeah. he's working on his own. The what, the little fella, was he? And, the uh, little hairy fella up there. He's the saying. little hairy fella up there with the top uh, hard hat. And, and the other fellows are going, look, you know, don't ask questions, you know, the boss decides who he takes on, we're mm. happy to be getting paid here. Don't <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> ask questions! Yeah. Well, I'll see him when he comes down. So he said, well, he's, he's pretty impressive, you know, the, the work rate he's doing, the way he's getting from one girder to the other. <laughs> he Swinging, seem, is he? He doesn't seem to be scared mm. of the heights or anything, he said, no, just let him get on with it, you know, we work well as a team. So anyway. <laughs> what nonsense is so, this? So, oh, he believes all this. Yep. So he sees the boss and he goes, that fella up there, he, uh, who's the fella up there, he's, he's pretty good. And he's like, look, you know, just get on with the job, yeah, I'll pay you, let's just all get on with our jobs and that. <laughs> Lunchtime comes, they're all sat there, sat on a little wall, having the sandwich, he's just thinking he'll come down in a bit. He's yeah. just carrying on. Yeah. Is he? He's just still going. Still yeah. going on that, right? Mm. So the fella says to the boss man, he says, isn't, isn't that fella up there, uh, gonna come down and join us for lunch? He said, uh, he said, like I said, mate, don't, don't worry about him, right? Yeah. He said, very secretive. I'm suspicious about this fella, I don't know, yeah, I, said, I, don't know, I, don't know. I don't know why he's working through his lunch, I don't know why he's not scared of heights, and I don't know why he's swinging from girder to girder, it's weird, go on. So he said, oh, well, anyway, you've reminded me that he's up there. He said, um, he's doing a lot of riveting and stuff up there. You probably need some more nuts to, uh... Right, sure, and what kind of nuts is that? Is that nuts to food, or...? So, he said, what, nuts? He says, yeah, just, uh, there's a bag full of them there, just, just put them on the hook, send them up, and he can get on with his job. So anyway, he picks these nuts up, nuts, right, yep. just hooks them on, he thinks, they're not that heavy, no. considering, you know, I mean, they're normally pretty heavy, aren't they, like, nuts big and bolts and stuff. Yeah. So anyway, he has a little glance in. Oh, no, what's in there? Nuts. What, you mean nuts that you can eat? Nuts that you can eat, oh. right? So, they send the bag up, and he's thinking, what's all that about? He checks him out, starts to stare, works it out. You can see that he's a little chimp running about, so he goes, I'm not happy with this. Why so, isn't he? Because he's working for an organisation that's, you know, there's unions for this sort of stuff. Isn't <laughs> is there? Yeah, he's not going, that's amazing. They've got a chimp riveting this building together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's not scary. He's wondering if they're breaking union <laughs> rules. So he, he, go, he goes- You didn't half talk some He goes, shit, and has a with he the goes boss. to the boss and he goes, look, I've worked out what you're playing at here. Yeah. He said, all them Is the there. boss sitting in a tyre? <laughs> He said, all oh, them lot out there might not be wise to what's- what's going on here. He yeah. said, but I've- I've clocked it, and you're sending nuts up to it, it's a monkey, it's not on. So he goes, look, you know, we're just all trying to earn a living here. He said, uh, don't get involved in it. I'm happy to pay you, but I'm paying him, don't- don't interfere. He's paying him? And he's saying, look, I- I'm just not happy with this, it's- it's not allowed. So the boss was saying, well- We pay honest, peanuts, mate, we get monkeys. He said, to be honest mate, you know, uh He's a great worker, <laughs> he's known for doing what he does, he's a good grafter. If one of you's gonna go, right, I'm afraid I'll have to let you go, cos he's, he's been here longer than that. Yeah. He was made redundant None because of that of happened. He, he was- he was laid off. None of that happened. He's laid off and that. And no. that's where that saying about, um, you know, like, there's a lot of tower blocks and that in America, it's like, like the, the, the chimp off the old block, is- is <laughs> where- <laughs> So that's monkey news. Thanks for listening to this uh, podcast. Who was it hosted by? It was hosted by a great bunch of guys called Positive Internet. They host the number one podcast in the world, The Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, goodbye, and Carl Pilkington. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited.
As Aldous Huxley once said, man is an intelligence in servitude to his organs. Made from the same stuff as algae, the human body has evolved into the most complex organism in the universe. An animal with power of introspection, conceiving complex metaphysical notions of morality, beauty, and love, while at the same time battling time, illness, and even death with even more sophisticated scientific weaponry. While we may still marvel at its complexity, what do we know about the human body? What are its wonders and limitations? And with scientific and medical technology moving ever forward, how will the human body evolve over the centuries to come? To discuss these questions and more, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, award-winning writer and graduate of the University of Warwick. Hello. And Carl Pilkington, a man without formal academic qualifications or any awards to speak of, but he's good at other things. Cleaning windows, for example, with his fucking tongue, Gump. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit harsh, isn't it? <laughs> All right. All your cells um, die and are replaced many times over in your life. Um, except the brain cells, you only lose them. You lose hundreds and millions and trillions, right? And you've still got plenty left, don't worry. Or well, most people have. Um, so only a small percentage of the cells you're born with remain yours, the brain cells. So supposing you're 99% different all the time, you're changing, is that the same person? Well, you'd say, yeah, because you've got the important ones, the brain cells, which keeps your memory, your personality, your input, the you. But, but then, as we've talked before, if you, ch if you took your brain and put it in someone else, would you yeah. be the same person? You know, well, then, so yeah, what well, defines the person? Yeah, it's the, the brain, isn't it? That, it that is the is brain, it. but then if you look different, you'd be treated differently and you have a different personality. You could still be the same person, but people change anyway. People's personalities change. And if you're in a car accident and you lose all your memories, you, you, you've got the same hardware. Uh, people have had complete personality changes. Particularly through car. I knew someone who knew someone whose, uh, yeah, girlfriend was in a terrible accident and she lost uh, a lot of her memory. And so the person she was with, her boyfriend or fiance, she no longer related to them in the same way. And equally, he, obviously, that, that wasn't the same woman that yeah, you fall in love fault? with. Yeah, but was it his fault? Was it his fault? What's that no, got to no, do no. with it? What's that got to do with it? No, was it his fault? Was the accident his well, what's fault? what's that got to do with it? Because you would be fed up, wouldn't you? That's a completely different point that he was making. No, it wasn't. He said yeah. a woman had an accident. Yeah, but we were talking about, are you the same person? Well, like, let's hear what Carl's point is. You said, yeah. you know this woman was yeah. in an accident. Yeah. It's terrible, that. It's sad. Yeah. Now, all I'm saying is she went- A opinion just popped in there. She- yeah, that, sad. Yeah. She went off him- I'll pass on your condolences. Yeah. She went off the fella. Yeah. All I'm saying is, you're saying, oh, it's because a, a brain had a knock and went, oh, I'm not into him anymore, but all I'm saying is, <laughs> if it was his fault who was driving the car and yeah. it happened because of him, mm. you would sort of go, Yeah, but that's idiot. not the point I was making at all. It's it not, wasn't, it? It's A, not, he not. wasn't involved, but B, it was because she got a form of amnesia, so she, she didn't relate to him in the same way because the life they'd spent together, she no longer had a memory of, and equally, when he was talking to her, she was no longer the person that he'd first met. Do you see what I mean? So that's what my point was, not because he was Oh. Yeah, no, I can understand that. That doesn't surprise me that much, I suppose. At the end of the day, it is what you go through, isn't it? Yeah. You can harp back, you can talk about stuff. Uh, Arp back. You can harp back. Is that what a good relationship is based on? If there's a, y a lot of young people out there listening, they're wondering what to look for. I, I think that's the best thing about getting old, isn't it? You yeah. can sit down and do nothing but think about a lot. If you're a baby, you've done now, you're lying there, you can't walk. I can't remember being a baby and I put that down to it being boring. Because <laughs> <laughs> you only remember the you good things. You can't remember your birthday! No, it's, it's, you remember the good things in life, don't you? I'm quite happy I can sit down for a good hour or so and just think back and go, oh, that was good. When was the last time you reminisced? Well, my mum and dad have been around, haven't they, so been yeah. reminiscing a lot. Yeah. Um, what were you thinking about? We were just ch chatting about, um, Tic Tacs. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great memories, yeah. The happy memories. <laughs> no, because I, you see, here's, here's the thing, you're saying how that woman changed mm. when she had her head caved in. <laughs> I, he never said that. What did you, well, the, the brain accident. Yeah, um, brain accident, yeah. The, the, the Tic Tacs, mm. now I used to love them. Yeah. When I was younger. Yeah. yeah. My dad got a load of them. Mm. What, got, this year? 
no, no, recently. years ago. Oh, years ago, like, years ago when mm. I loved them. I said I loved Tic Tacs, me. Yeah. yeah. He met s one of his mates. He didn't nick him from the sweet shop? No. No, no that's No, he knew did. some yeah. mate who, uh, who could get his hand on a load. Right. And, uh, he thief. must have got about, he, he must have got about thirty crates of Tic Tacs. Thirty crates of Tic Tacs? Honestly, mm. with like, about twenty-four on each crate. We got them, stuck them in a cupboard under the, uh, just in the kitchen in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> now, I worked my way through about six crates. It's quite happy. When? How, in how long? I don't know, in about two weeks, three weeks or something. Right. And then, uh, after that, I'm getting sick of these. Right, yeah. You were minty fresh, but you were sick lovely of lovely fresh breath. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I haven't got that much more to tell you about it. It's just. Well, just, just this, sorry, whoa, whoa, whoa! Bear in mind, this was something he was recently reminiscing with his parents <laughs> yeah, about. No. They were sat around, and we've already learned up to an hour could go by reminiscing. <laughs> yeah, sat around yeah. for an hour uh, talking uh, about the, the I've great already run out of sorry, responses. Yeah. I've got yeah. nothing to say about no, that. Opinion, I but mean, I was nearly going to say, "What would you do with the empty little flicky tic tac boxes?" Yeah. But then I mean, you realise that that's utterly dull and boring. Uh, well, and I just, I was struggling. I don't know what this hand like is, other than a yeah. bloke. Other than you said your dad, I liked it. Tic Tacs, mate. He went, all right, I talked to Albert. Albert, you got Tic Tacs? I've got 30 crates, if that'll do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bring him around. Put him under cupboard. He's got through 12 crates. What's his breath like? Fucking lovely, but he's been sick all over the country in place. Oh, do you want some more? No. Cause we fucking don't. You'll talk about that in a few years' time. Cause we will for about a fucking hour. No. Then we bring it up in an audio book. But that's, I think that's how we got onto it. Because even though I, tr I tried to get rid of a load, I used to give them to mates, take them to school, say, have some Tic Tacs. Yeah. Can have them for free. We used a load in the cat litter tray. <laughs> no, no, well, we you did. didn't. We did. It no, was just didn't. ways of getting rid of them. Jesus Christ! Sort of freshy, sort of freshy smell, isn't it? Well, it's the same amazing. sort of condensity in that, isn't it? Condensity it is the same condensity. Um, same condensity. <laughs> yeah, so I got rid of them like that. And then uh, the weird thing was, <laughs> even though I'd got shut of them all, um, you'd be vacuuming up and you'd always hear one ting its way up the tube. <laughs> Tinging its way up the tube. It's tinging its way up the tube. It's tinging its way up the tube. Ding tong, ping pong. It's tinging its way up the tube. That sounds like something from Willy Wonka. <laughs> oh god! No, it's just I'm just demonstrating that because that's how many of them there were around the house. You'd drop mm. them, they'd go in every corner and that, like Pac-Man mm. or something. They'd be that's everywhere. You'd be vacuuming up, tinging it. Sheila's up. getting married. Hannah gets confetti. Don't buy any confetti. Go to cupboard under stairs. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's a little memory there, isn't it? It that's is a little memory. Up. No, it's, it's a the, really the, little memory. The, the strange Tic Tac house in yeah. Salford, where everything is made of Tic Tacs. Wow, that must have been a hell of that's a ingra hell of a time you had with your parents there. Oh. The old Tic Tac reminiscence. No, but it's better. You see, you're you're saying, oh, what a boring story that is. Yeah. But when yeah. when I your mum and dad gravelled the drive, <laughs> yeah, smell it. <laughs> suck, suck the drive if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. No, but it's different. When my mum and dad are there and they can remember that and they're going, oh yeah, yeah, the Tic Tac incidents and stuff. <laughs> What's known as the Tic Tac incident. <laughs> the Tic Tac Let, incident! Let us never speak of the Tic Tac incident. Yeah, I just imagine the clock ticking. There, it's Christmas Day, I go, T -t 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 What are you smiling at? Oh, remember it used to ting up the tube. <laughs> <laughs> you should think about selling this to Hollywood. Listen, what do you remember then? <laughs> what, what do, do I you remember? remember? That's wow. an amazing thing to That's say. That's a difficult question to answer. Yeah, I don't. Nothing. Nothing at all. Why, out of interest though, and this is, this will sound naive, why don't we remember <laughs> the very early moments of our lives? Why, why is it, is it, is it because it would be too harrowing to remember the point at which we, uh, sort of born? Because I don't really remember anything from those first few years. Why, why is it? Is it just because the brain's not fully formed at that moment? Uh, I don't know. The memory's not sufficiently uh, I, I, developed? I, I, I honestly it's got to be trauma, on it? It's the things, again, we were talking about me being younger, and the youngest I could remember back to, was 1978. How old were you then? Uh, when were you born? 72. What, you, can only, you couldn't remember earlier than six? Um, you can remember back to about two or three, most people. What, you no, no way. No way. My mum and dad don't even remember me then. <laughs> 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 because you're not doing anything. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't even remember me then! 
<laughs> That's amazing. Because oh, they, 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 they oh, pinpoint they things. They remember all the tic tacs they've ever yeah, yeah. Do you remember when Carl was uh, six? Of course I do. <laughs> yeah. Five? Yeah. Four? <laughs> oh, yeah. Three? No. <laughs> Two? No! <laughs> because you're not doing anything, are you? <laughs> my mum and dad don't even remember so, me then! And, and it's oh, weird. I and remember, <laughs> must have been about two, sitting on a potty surrounded by Lego. I remember that. Very st strong image I have of that. No. I don't remember that. No, you no, wouldn't remember no, that, no, were you? No, no, you no, weren't there, were you? you? What do you mean? What, you don't remember Steve sitting on a potty <laughs> surrounded by Lego? No, I mean, I can't remember having a potty. I remember oh, having one of them. I'm not suggesting no, you have the you same used memory. You to go in a fucking litter tray. Now I know why to eat a Tic Tac while you're having a shit. But, um, okay, so what is your very first memory? The one that cropped up the other day was having my eyes sort of, uh, glued together by, um... <laughs> Gangsters, <laughs> where's the fucking tic tacs? <laughs> no, I we was... lost our truck for you. <laughs> when, I, when I was on holiday and I slept near the window, and the window was open, and I used to wake up in the morning with my eyes shut. My mum and dad thought I was having a lovely lie in, and I was just couldn't open my eyes. But more, I don't say why were they? Why were they glued? Why were they? What do you mean they why, were glued? Why, why, but just, why didn't you say, mum, dad, <laughs> I'm not asleep. My eyes are glued together. It's just <laughs> you get a build up on yeah. the on the eyelashes. Yeah, yeah. And it all. It, <laughs> when they came in, and you could sense them looking. I didn't know they were there. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Why did you say to us? So you lay there dead still? Well, you should have sprinkled some tic tacs around the bed, and you'd have heard them <laughs> crunching in as they came in. Yeah. Oh, what do you mean? So, so that's, you, that's your eyes. Memory. Wait. So your eyes are stuck together. You're lying there. You're still. You're awake, but you can't open your eyes, so you don't say anything. Yeah. What? Well, why? What, what every so your, day? It your memory a of lot. It happened a lot. But your memory was that that this was scary to you because you thought I'd gone blind. You've gone blind. Probably, and it hasn't happened since. So it's something you remember happening, isn't it? <laughs> it's like the kidney stone thing that mm. will always stay with me because it's like I was in agony. Yeah, right. and that's what I'm saying about trauma. It's quite frightening when you're a no, kid. You, you can't open your eyes. So we don't you, remember. You were trauma. saying you don't remember trauma. No. <laughs> Do you, well, remember, that, do you remember that traumatic. conversation we had a few minutes ago? Maybe it's because they had time to lie there and think about it. Because I, I sort of wonder that if, if having vision <laughs> does get in the way. Mm. No, that's a good one. Okay, go, go on, on. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, go on. Well, just your eyes, your eyes mm. are, you know. Go on. Um. What are they? They're the, they're the thing mm. that makes you do the things you want to do, aren't they? Your eyes at the end of the what day. What do you mean? Interesting. Go on. Could be a, could everything, be a, everything. You might want to. Yeah. You might like drawing. Right. Your eyes. Mm, that's an example though, isn't it? Because then you might like music and you don't need your eyes for that, do you? Um, so well, you yeah, it. because you've still yeah. got to find your way to the record shop to well, find the, well, the record no, no, you want. You, no, someone could, um, put, it, put it for you or you could, uh, um. What I mean is your eyes. Wonder, say, doing? say rather you than, like um. You might be the perfume you need. Let me just think. You know, don't you? Wine tasting, just. I've just always thought. Mm. Blind people, go on. Are probably good listeners, right? Yeah, that okay. makes sense. Yeah. Yes, which means that they'll be more brainy. Possibly, they won't waste their eyes on watching rubbish telly. No. Yep. Sure. Um, but bear in mind, you learn a lot, don't you? Yeah, just from yeah, what you see, you absorb a lot of information from what you see. Notes. Yeah, but but blind people are going to say. Right, I'm not going to be defeated here. Mm, right. I'm going to make sure that I still feed my brain with stuff. Right. Whereas if you've got eyes, your eyes can sometimes say, well, don't listen to that intelligent thing there. Yeah. Watch some rubbish on the telly. Yeah. yeah. Why are you, your eyes are saying that, are they? Who are they talking to? Are they talking- I'm just saying, if you've got eyes- Yeah, they're talking to you. You're more drawn to things drawn that to, keep- you, your, What are you drawn to, keep, though? Keep your eyes- Go Keep on, your eyes you interested. It's like everything. Right. It picks your food for you. Mm. Does it? No. Yeah, it does. It, it does. Of course it does. That's why they advertise food in a way that the- Look, those are adverts on the telly. Look, so, this, this isn't an ordinary pasta. Yeah. This is- So yeah, you, well, you'd eat a nice, uh, a nice plastic apple. Would you? It looked like a lovely. It looked like an apple. Eat it. Presentation mm. is ninety percent of what goes on now in this world. Mm. Whether it's clothes, is that is that a that's because, that you picked that's up from somewhere? That's because you know what the thing you like looks like, so you recognise it. You go, 
oh i like that you don't go oh i like the look of that i ate it last time and i like the look of it as i was eating it you go i know what that is that's the thing that tasted good not always no i think there's a lot of cakes out there and i've i've been conned where my eyes have gone that looks good i'll go can i have one of them and they get it and it's just like air with cream on it but that's there's nothing you, there's you, no you curious with your eyes at that point but well, you just contradicted annoying. your own point no i haven't i've said my eyes have said this is what you want yeah and i've been disappointed with it so they uh, so your eyes shouldn't pick your food then should they really they you shouldn't should, no but they do well again the next time you you, you get the eyes go again remember well, that yeah I'll, but i'll say i'll sort of go hang on a minute you remember <laughs> last time this is different you are the strangest it's man not, there's I have weird. ever met. There's nothing weird about you that. You are the strangest person I've ever met. So it's are not. you mistrustful of your eyes? You, you don't are. trust anything you see now, you query here's, here's a clearer, Here's a clearer way of describing it. Go on. Holiday brochure. Right. Your eyes, look at it. Look mm. at this villa here. Look at that, it's got its own pool, close to all the amenities. <laughs> Get there, my eyes. What have you picked? Because it's not what? as good. Who's arguing <laughs> now? Who's angry with your eyes? Was your, were your eyes angry then? No, I was angry. Okay, so your mouth and brain are angry with your eyes? Because one, my nose has kicked in, I'm next to the bins. Right, okay. You <laughs> couldn't see that in the brochure, no, the eyes couldn't see that's that. That's true, true, true. <laughs> the bottle banks again, they're close by, my ears are going, what's the racket? Yeah. My eyes are going, sorry. What? Your eyes are saying sorry? I'm just saying, that you can't trust your eyes. eyes. I don't I think you can. I'm surprised they felt guilty. I love the fact that his, his sense of human biology is based on the numbskulls. I don't, I don't yeah. know why you, you must pick stuff based on what your eyes thought initially. Well, it depends. But Carl, they're not detached in this separate way. They're not different operatives, all with different agendas. It's all connected. They should be. If I look at a picture in a, a brochure or a magazine, and I think, oh, that looks nice, my brain instantly says, be careful though, because that's a publicity, uh, tool, mm. in order to try and sell me this particular ideal. It's prob- chances are it doesn't look exactly in real life like it does in the brochure. Mm. I'm instantly thinking that. I'm not, I'm not going, hey, I'll book that. And then two weeks later I get there, I can't believe Ears, what do you make of it? Well, I'm livid because I can hear some racket. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is you don't see that many disappointed blind people. You mm. don't not, see that many disappointed blind, blind people. people. They're not let down that much. They're not let down. Spurious. You've got, that's no, you've got no information for that, no evidence for that at all. You've just made that You up. don't see many disappointed blind people. <laughs> I've always been fascinated in biology in general and uh, I remember when I was about 13 or 14 I got this book Man's Body and Owner's Manual I was fascinated by it it's like a sort of textbook is it about it's the body? it's great though because it's got absolutely everything from you know um life and death and then i was worried that you could chart when you die from sort of things like you know where you were born socioeconomic group um uh, have, you, have you had fill-ins and all those things oh I'd, I'd worry it and you give yourself point system but um it's a fascinating book it's got everything and of course uh, all the stuff about my organs you know um I, I i can't think of the number of men that went home and got a ruler after <laughs> reading about averages yeah um uh as a, there's a nice little um chapter here what is the average <laughs> <laughs> you have to push really hard with the ruler until it's sort of like going right into your stomach and then you can get it up to like two or three inches <laughs> um lovely chapter here on um sexuality i want to read one um this is under the uh homosexual activities um it goes into what they like uh anal sex it explains what that is it's um anal sex this is inserted into the partner's anus um normally with the aid of an artificial lubricant so it gives you all the details there um now in addition to anal intercourse, many homosexuals have practiced fisting, inserting a hand or fist or other objects into the anus as a form of sexual stimulation. Experience has shown, however, that this practice should be avoided since it can cause gay bowel syndrome. Now, I'd never heard of that. Wow. Gay yeah. bowel syndrome. Gay bowel syndrome. Um, fissures, like lesions and stuff, and other damage to the walls of the rectum. So, um, you'd go to the doctor and go, oh, I've got a problem. He goes, well, you've got, uh, gay bowel syndrome. Are you, uh, gay? Yes, I am. Yeah. All right, um, well, have you, have you been, have you been sticking another man's fist up your anus? Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we like that. Okay. Well, uh, my advice to you is to stop that because, um, 
is causing damage. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna stop it, by the way. I'm not gonna stop it. I'm gonna carry on doing that. And then just keep coming back here with a sore arse, if that's, if that's all right. And you can just fix it, can you? Uh, cause I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, in fact, I'm gonna go home now and do it, even though you've told me that I probably shouldn't. And I'm gonna, gay bowel syndrome, you say? <laughs> Carl, I mean, what do you, what do you think about that? Sticking a, a, a fist up your ass. Uh, wasn't meant to be, was it? I mean, it's, it's, it's not, you know, it's gonna do damage, isn't it? It's, it's like, you've gotta know when to stop putting stuff in a carrier bag. <laughs> and it's the same as that, isn't it? Cause it rips. <laughs> yeah. Someone told me this recently at a party. Uh, fascinating fact. Um, see what you think of it, Carl. He told me that Apparently, if you've got time on your hands, you can put your fist inside someone else's arse and then you can work your hand very slowly up through the person's body. It takes about two hours, apparently, and eventually, it's he's, he's what he told me, you can touch that person's heart. Right. Right, and it's like the most intimate thing you could ever do with right. someone else. That's bollocks. That's what he said. That's what well, I've How could you said. touch their heart? <laughs> One, the alimentary canal is about 30 foot long, so you'd have to either have to have 30, you'd have to be Mr. Tickle, right? Or you'd have to be rolling up the alimentary canal as you go, like a, like a stocking on a pole, <laughs> right? And then when you get up there, how can you touch the heart? You'd have to rip through the esophagus, which would kill them, okay? If the, if the arm going all the way up their alimentary canal the wrong way didn't <laughs> But I like the idea of someone saying that to a loved one. <laughs> all right, love. <laughs> Love, little surprise for you. Um, the kids are at your mother's. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, th I've put They're the, the phones off the hook. They're yeah. out for two hours. They, they, actually, they better be out for four, because I'm gonna need to get it back out again. Yeah. Where's the Marge? <laughs> it's like, imagine the, the doorbell goes, you got a sign for a package. Who told you that at a party? A psychopath? I don't know. He's, 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 and then he was convinced it was true, because he, he went online to try and, uh, even when we were at a party, he found a computer also, and he started typing in fist, heart stuff, and I said, you better delete that, in case yeah. the person whose computer I it know, fist, heart, fist yeah. heart, Also, if the aim is to touch the heart, right, go via the mouth, it's shorter. <laughs> Let's pop it down the mouth. Yeah. Kyle, thoughts? I mean, there's getting to know people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you know how people say, oh, you shouldn't use a toilet with the door open and all that, mm. because it ruins, what, like, the you knowing too much and everything, but that, for me, where do you go from there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I've, you know me, I mean, I've got nothing against, uh, gays and that, but no. I've, 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 they puzzle me to this day. There's still things that happen when, uh, <laughs> I go, what is all that about? Like what? I went to, what's the name? Mm. Harley Street. I went for a, a checkup. Mm. And, uh, like a medical. Mm. Posh, you know Harley Street, it's like, yeah. it's the top doctors, isn't it? I've never yeah. been before. Yeah. All posh buildings and that. Uh, went up to the counter. I said, uh, I see the doctor. They said, name, yeah. Right. Give us ten minutes, go and wait in the waiting room. Dead posh waiting room. Dead fancy. Big leather furniture and that. Yep. Loads of magazines. I mean, m like a, like a news agent. Yep. In the middle of the room on a table. Loads of them. So I'm looking through and there's the, you know, there's the top quality ones. You're Esquire. You know, GQ. Classy yacht weekly, uh, all that country life, uh, boys, boys, it's one there, yeah, boys, what's that? Right, lifted up like the one on top of it, and it's like boys with a Z. <laughs> Two fellas stood there looking, uh, sort of Italian looking. Ah, oh, yeah, right. Uh, remember Brother Beyond. That sort of look. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sort of greasy it's air. It's a cracking back. reference here. Yeah. Um Dungarees on. Uh No shirt though. No shirt, just dungarees sort of unbuttoned hanging down a little bit. Sure. So no one else is about. I'm never gonna buy a magazine like that. <laughs> <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna tell us you look to a guy magazine. Look. I had I had a little little look just because I thought you know like I say you it's one you're always chance. looking to learn aren't you you're always <laughs> looking to learn yeah always open you know there might have been something in there that I go right I get it now I understand why why they like doing that or whatever yeah all right so uh, she said I was gonna you know ten minute wait I can I can have a quick flick through mm. picked it up had a look um still none the wiser 
Right. Well, what did you see when you opened it up? Um, just loads of, uh, I mean, like I've said to you before about, I don't know why they like looking at knobs when they've got one of their own. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's no right. surprises there, you're not gonna go, oh, yeah, so, Sure, so, yeah. Nice. Lots of that. Yeah, they can't get to it, can they? They can't get to their own. Who can't? Well, if they want a little, little chew, a little nosh, they can't get to their own, can they? They break their back. But they can't get to this fellas in the magazine. <laughs> it's only a picture, they're just looking at it, they might as well look at their own. That's in what I mean. Room, yeah. yeah, just have a look at it. Uh, they just stood there, they're not up to anything, they were just sort of stood there, some had like car oil on the face. <coughs> uh, there was Why? one sat on a, I don't know, just like a mechanic type thing. Right. Car oil on the face and like rubbed on the chest and that. Sure. Not about. Yeah. There was someone sat on a, um, like a, a, one of them square things of hay. Oh yeah, yeah sat, uh, like sort of sat on it, straddling it. Yeah, uh, that must have been uncomfortable. Again, no about. Yeah, yeah, just looking, just looking like it's normal. That's crazy. Sort of like no that. farmer walks around like that. What was the other one? There was a, uh, you know, motorbike. They always like them. Yeah. No, I'm going through and and then like the content is all puns. Right. It's all you know. Uh, oh, it's a couple of weeks ago. I should have wrote some down. It, it it all everything was to do with knob. Right. That's the only bit they're interested in, <laughs> in the his, male body. Look at, look at this bloke it's strapping not, this huge throbbing thing. The bike's not bad either. Yeah, yeah all that, yeah. loads of them. Uh, it was just, uh, uh, just all, just, just, just 100%, like, let's, let's just talk about the knob. That's yeah. a good name for a, uh, ma a gay magazine. 100% cock. 100% cock. Did it not at any moment sort of maybe slightly under you that you might, the doctor might come in? And see you reading boys? No, because I or wasn't. What if I walked through? Because I remember once when you were in hospital about to have um, a tube going down your knob and you were sitting in your pants with stockings on and I walked through and you were horrified. So what if I'd have walked in then and went, yeah, God, what are you doing? I would have just said, Look at this. Look at this, it's free. And I, and you, and I said, Why did you bring that with you? No, I would have just said, look, does it look like I brought it with me? Look yeah, at this. yes it does, because well, I've never, because so I would at... never see, you would never see a gay magazine in a doctor's waiting room. So I think you bought that and then, and pretended that it was that's, there. That's, that's the thing, that's, I was amazed by that. Because there was no like, you know, there was no Mayfair or anything. They just catered for like, if you wanted a bit of knob action. <laughs> It was really, I mean really, I could have complained. Sure. So if you're gonna have this, where's a bit of the other? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah! You had a bit of this, where's a bit of the other? I know one of the things that, that they had, and I thought, they're, they're really struggling with like, ideas. They had a Sococo. <laughs> <laughs> As in Sudoku? Yeah. Sococo. Sococo. Surely, surely Sudico is better. No, cause it was like Sococo. Yeah, but it's dick as well. Sudico. Yeah. What, and it's, it was still a Sudoku style puzzle, but yeah, it just had that name. Yeah, yeah, It's just so everything that is all- It was just Sudoku, but called Su- <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. Now, that if I, if I was gay, do you know, like, Let's have say, a game of Lubo. <laughs> <laughs> let's have a game of Knobopoly. Knoberation. <laughs> Knoberation! <laughs> <laughs> let's have a game of chess. Cock. <laughs> 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 Let's have a game of fuckaroo. <laughs> well, that works for you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's how we spend our okay, Christmas. Poo. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Human intimacy is a very strange thing because kissing is a bizarre thing, isn't it? Really, I mean, I don't know what the evolutionary origin of kissing is. You know what I mean? It's quite a sort of strange. It's like anything. It's though, a isn't strange it? thing. It's because you, if you start reading about all the weird stuff that goes on, like people who have it away with dead bodies and that, it's because you've you've planted the seed in your head, and you start going, "Oh, I'll give that a go," like food. You either want an olive or you don't. Some people will go, I'll try it. Some will go, they're not for me. Do you want an olive? Uh, no, but you can shove your hand up me ass so far to touch me up. Uh, you haven't got, you have, you have got any olives? I have got some olives, but if you are fed up with olives, <laughs> yeah. I've got an arse here going begging and only, and uh, 30 foot along the animals now is a little harder like you to yeah, touch. But, but the thing is, if you, if you give that a go, 
and you enjoy it, then you want to do it again. Yeah. Right. And you've created stuff. Uh, do not stuff. try and do that. Do not try and stick your hand so far up someone's arse you can touch their heart. There is no point to it. It is a myth that it could happen. You will end up murdering it's someone. It's a sorry, sorry state of affairs where you've got to put that message out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah! But that's it, isn't it? That's the other thing, isn't it? That, um, you don't hear of animal fetishes and animal phobias. You know, you don't, you don't get a lion who's a little bit nervous of antelope. I don't like antelope meat. And yet you have people here who are, um, all those weird things of people who, um, can only have the pavement. Which is a good thing to, you know, you'll never be lonely unless someone suddenly drops you on a desert island and you go, oh, I'll never see a pavement again. <laughs> um, what do you think of that? Those, those people that just think, you know. Well, they're just idiots, aren't they? There are some weird. You know, you've got some clever ones, you've got a lot of divs. There's more divs on the world than better ones. <laughs> Wow, that's a brief sentence to say. <laughs> yeah, he's right though. He's right. As as gobbledygook as that was, he's absolutely right. I, I think I think I think Carl isn't a div. I think he's a better one, but doesn't know it. I think he's he, it's it's strange because I think that um he's got all the other evolution of the of the human being, but um he doesn't know which side his bread's buttered. He's he doesn't realise he's cleverer than he is. The number of times I find a theory that he said in gobbledygook, but it's true. I, I think that, um, I just, I think he's been dealt a bad hand mm. in the brain department. <laughs> Do you know what <laughs> sure. I mean? Yeah. Thoughts, Carl? Well, your brain's in two bits, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I wonder if one half is really good, the other half's messing it up. <laughs> Yeah, that could, be case, that could be the case. Yeah, well, it is split into two. Yeah, and they and they are, are responsible for different things. Yeah, it's like these sort of families where there's a kind of really bright kid and then a sort of wayward child who just gets into drugs and stuff. Sort of like that up there. Yeah, in your head, because you have you have quite sort of out there nebulous thoughts, and you've got a lot of common sense, haven't you? And just having that uh, that other sense of like this is dodgy. What spider sense? Just that sense where you just go, I, I don't know why, but something's telling me we shouldn't be here. And you go, all right, let's go. <laughs> and you move from it, and you don't know what, what that is. Yeah. You don't know what's decided that. You know, it's like when you're lost. A part of my brain's got me lost, but then there's another bit that I don't know what it is where they go, go left. <laughs> And you do, and then you go, so, remember that time when you called me and I said I don't know where I am, and yeah. I couldn't concentrate. <laughs> think of that! Think of that! I called him! Oh my god, what are you doing? I don't know where I am. <laughs> what do you mean you didn't know where you were? What, you I got lost. I what, went in wandering. London you got yeah, lost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I went wandering and then, uh, uh, you know, It's when like, he first moved into his new place, he was yeah. walking back from his old place to his new place and he didn't know where he was. He How tried can to you ever shock. really get lost in London though? I'm just, that's um, cabby. Well, yeah, yeah, I don't want to do that because I feel bad pulling one over and then saying, where am I? Um, <laughs> yeah, they do appreciate that, <laughs> do they? But, um, I found my way back, didn't I? Yeah. But you told me one minutes. time that you, uh, that you, you much prefer getting lost. You love wandering around and getting lost. Yeah, you said go, that's much better. Yeah, yeah, it was a cold day, it was a cold day. I just wanted to be at home. I had things to do. There's mm. a time and place to be lost. Well, uh, wait, go on. Uh, well, a place What's you don't place? know. What's the a, place to be lost? Somewhere you don't know. Right, good. Okay, And specific. the time? The time when, when you're not in a rush. Right. Uh, but that time I was in a rush and, and I was cold. So a typical argument in your head is what? I'm lost. Um. I'll do one, I'll do one side of the brain, you do the other side of the brain, okay, in your head, okay? Carl. What? This isn't where we should be. You want to go home, didn't you? This isn't your house, because it's a, it's a field. You live in a house, don't you? Why are we standing in a field? This isn't your house. You were meant to go home, but you've walked into a field. No, but that wouldn't. I've, I've never been that lost where I'm walking across a field. <laughs> At the edge of the field, I'd go. Hang on a minute. This isn't right. I won't get in the middle. I won't go that far. I'd go right. I definitely shouldn't be here. <laughs> You did once. You were in the uh, middle of a field and your dad had to rescue yeah, you. Yeah, that's you when I was a kid because I was reading as I was walking. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> and 
that he never read again. <laughs> <laughs> but there's another sense. I was in the middle of nettles there. Yeah. I'd walked. It was at uh, it was at my brother's wedding in Cornwall, mm. and I was walking near a cliff edge, <laughs> reading a book. <laughs> reading. Okay, so so uh, so okay. <laughs> walking, Carl. I know you're enjoying this book. I've got, can I have a word with you? Just look. Just look past the book a minute. It's, it's just it's a big drop. Yeah. Well, that's what happened, and then right. that's when the other senses went. Hang on a minute. I'm being stung. Load of nettles and stuff. I just had to wait there for ages until my dad sort of thought, "Where's Carl?" I was there for about an hour and a half. <laughs> you showed a book. <laughs> Fuck me like a cartoon. But why are you wandering off reading a book when it's your brother's wedding? No, this was like we were in. Uh, I think it was Saint. I it's Saint Ives in Cornwall. Yeah, yeah. It was in Saint Ives, and. Uh, just, you know, it was a nice day and that. There was no telly in the place. It was a horrible house. Yeah. Um, so it's all, it was haunted, uh -huh. actually. Uh -huh. No, honestly. No, not honestly. It wasn't haunted. There's no such thing as ghosts. So, those, so you saying honestly it was haunted means fuck all. It's the most, it's the weirdest place and weirdest sensation I've ever had. I spoke to a woman called Mrs. Battersby. Right. Uh, who sat on my bed keeping me up all night. My mum came up, she said, you look shattered. I said, yeah, I had a kip all night. She said, why? I said, I've been talking to Mrs. Battersby. She said, who's that? I said, no, oh, some old woman. Now, I can't remember it now, but that's what I did then. And then, uh Sorry, sorry, uh, so Mrs. Battersby didn't exist, is that what you're saying? She was the ghost? Yeah. Wasn't the landlady? No, there's no landlady. It's a big house. About, right. about 12 bedrooms in it. Right. Dead, dead cheap to stay there, because it was a wreck. My were you dad Ill? went were out you one night. Did you have flu at the no, time? No, I had nothing like that. I just so you were sitting up, but you were awake, and you were having a conversation with Mrs. <laughs> Battersby. Mm. <laughs> what did she look like? I can't remember. I can't even remember having the chat now. Right. But so at the time, I was like, oh, she just doesn't shut up, chatting all night. So you don't remember this happening, or you do remember it happening? No, I remember that. Like, n if I see my mum now and I mention say, ah, oh, she'll go, oh yeah, Mrs. Battersby. She remembers coming in because she was older than me, wasn't she? So. To her, yeah. my mum. Was she? Yeah. Oh, Mrs. Battersby. She was older than both she of you. She was older because I'm calling her Mrs. Battersby. If she was my age, I'd probably say, oh, it's Susan or whatever. Right, sure. You'd call Matt older people by the same yeah. name, don't you? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so she kept oh, up all night. Don't know, I'm thinking of pictures at the wedding. Uh, why do you have to go through other things to just have a memory? How old do you reckon you why were? Do, why, I, I don't understand why you haven't got direct access to your memories. How old do you reckon you were? Uh, Your mum was older though, yeah? You must have a vague idea of when this well, event was. I'm thinking about it now, I'm thinking. Okay. I'm, I'm picturing the picture of myself at this wedding. Okay. And how old are you? What are you doing? How tall I'd say you? I look about... How were you? Uh, about I'd say I look about seven or eight, looking at the picture. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. So Mrs. Battersby is chatting away to you. You don't remember what she said, but you do remember having the conversation. No, he doesn't remember it at no, all. I don't remember the chat now. Well then so why are you telling- you must your remember memory. it because you're telling us about it's it. Not it. Not because memory. it's a memory. My mum's reminded me of it. Yeah, but all it says is- uh, oh, this is so far removed. This is hearsay that your mum said you spoke to a ghost once and you don't even remember the ghost. Mrs. But Battersby. No, yeah, you no, remember you the don't name, remember her. because your mum reminded you of it. In a court of law, if there was a ghost court, they go hearsay, thrown out of court. Right. You yeah. don't have a memory of Mrs. Battersby. No, look, I know that when I was a kid, yeah. I had a beetle. <laughs> I ate a beetle because I thought it was licorice. Now, I can't remember that now. You can't remember that, but you you know it happened because your mother told you it happened. Exactly. Right. <laughs> but the fundamental thing is that we can believe- <laughs> We can memories believe- We can believe you ate a beetle, well, because that is something that could happen in real life. But what we're questioning is that you spoke to a ghost. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what sort of beetle was it? Just one of them standard beetles, just a <laughs> black shiny one. Thing is, right, a couple of years ago we were in the ivy and the food came and there's a big blob of wasabi, right? It was like a, a um, got a, a called an oriental hors d'oeuvre, right? And uh, I looked over at Carl and he started going, uh, drinking water. I said, what have you done? He said, I have that. I said, that was a blob of wasabi. He said, I thought it was one mushy pea. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classy restaurant, they're serving one mushy pea.
Well, they do that, don't they? <laughs> wow. Small portions. It's all trendy, isn't it? Yeah, I love the fact that it's this exactly the same thing. Yeah. They've swapped beetle for wasabi yeah. and licorice for pea. Uh, you see things, you see something. It's think, a good job you remember that anecdote, though, because he does it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. In years to come, we'll be going, I ate some wasabi once. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Well, according to Ricky, I did, yeah. I was in the Ivy. I thought, I thought it were mushy pea. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so hang on, I just want to go back to Mrs. Batsby because what you other... confidently said, you confidently said, uh, it was, it was, it was haunted, it was, it was haunted place, yeah. but you've got no real evidence for it because even, even you claim you had this encounter, you don't even remember it. Yeah, but you don't remember everything in life, But you supposedly you? had a conversation with a ghost. I know, yeah. but I didn't know. When I was younger, I but didn't think that was a ghost. you remember the specifics of an oh, aunt so walking you, around? Yeah, so you thought, ah, oh, so I see. If you'd have had the memory, it would just be a nice old lady on the end of your bed all night. Right. And then... It, it, the then when I mentioned it, my man was saying, "What do you mean, Mrs. Battersby? Who's Mrs. Battersby?" Right. When you're a kid, you're not terrified, are you? No. Nothing scary. I mean, I'm, I'm beginning to think who the fuck is Mrs. Battersby. I must admit. But so, yeah, that was. Uh, but it was a weird place. I mean, there was no telly. Right. Um, all they had for sort of company was a calculator. <laughs> 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 you wow. are the strangest little man that's, that's ever lived. Come on, he had a oh, no. There goes Carl with his friend. What's his friend? Oh, it's a, it's a little. It's a Sanyo 4197G. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. Oh, calculator. Do that boobs thing again. Uh, my mum and dad used to go Memories. out. I stayed in there. Just shots of him with his calculator, <laughs> calculator. on the beach. It's yeah. <laughs> Sunday. Maybe beautiful and yeah. Four air. plus 16. <laughs> what would it be? Uh, Why are we friends with a calculator? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Just so much the shots of him in Vietnam! He's carrying Tommy! Where the batteries? Where the batteries? Where the batteries? Where the funeral for him! <laughs> His, his batteries are all over the floor! <laughs> oh, fucking hell! The only company was a calculator! Oh, I used to knock around with a brick! Oh, oh, God. oh fuck me! Carl. The human body is one of the things that you're actually genuinely fascinated in. This is one of the things that you admit is, is quite amazing. And, um, I think we all agree with that. Here's some, uh, quite incredible, um, stats and facts about the human body. What do you think of this? 50,000 of the cells in your body will die and be replaced with new cells all while you're listening to this sentence. Go on. Well, that's it. What's the sentence? That was the sentence. Uh, what was the sentence again? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. The sentence doesn't matter. 50,000 just dying and being replaced in that time. But what are they doing? Different cells do different things. Some are taste buds. Some carry haemoglobin and oxygen to other cells. Yeah. Some are skin. Some are liver. I've heard about skin. I've heard about uh, skin, sort of. What? You know. What you heard? Um, a rumor about skin. You heard about skin. What? It's just it, it keeps just... all your stuff from falling on the fucking floor. Well, what? it's it's a thing that makes you what you are as well, doesn't it? More what do you than mean? more than anything. Why? Well, without the skin, you're just a skeleton. You look all the same. No, you're not just a skeleton. No. Other than your lungs and your heart and your kidneys and stuff. What well, I'm saying is, I, I know, went to and that, all the flesh yeah, on top and all I, the blood vessels. And I all the... went to that bodies exhibition. Yeah, no, here we are. this is it. He, he knows all about the human body and science because <laughs> he went to the bodies exhibition. Do you know where the German fella cuts bodies up? Yes. Now. He had a load of people on show. Could have all been the same family. <laughs> because everyone, without the skin on their head, looks the same. Other well, than height, yeah. everybody looks exactly the same. And that's why racism is so stupid. Well, it's a good point. Good point, isn't it? Yeah. That saying that, though, I did think most of them were Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> what made you draw that conclusion? Why? It's just the eyes. <laughs> Honestly, if you've seen it, <laughs> it, it looks there's something that, uh, and they're a bit mad, aren't they? They do all that endurance stuff, and I thought this is the ultimate way to that's go, isn't it? I think that's, that's, that's Japanese, 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 yeah. Just is completely it? Diff yeah, completely different um, race, culture, country, nation. Right. Well, mm. well, the Japanese then, I reckon they've donated their body to it. You started off saying you cannot tell anything about where they come from because they haven't got any skin. It was just the eyes. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> it didn't didn't occur to you. Or, I mean, was there not any information saying where the bodies were sourced from? They don't tell they? you. They, they just tell you that if you want to be part of an exhibition later in your life, mm. put your name down. And what did you learn about the body from this exhibition? Well, I told you. Um, you know, we we all look similar. At the end of the day, your skin is what makes people look different. Yeah, that's that's the bit that makes you look like you, doesn't it? Yeah, that's the bit that you can tell how old somebody is. Yeah, that's that. what that's what you recognise. You don't recognise someone's skeleton and their brain, unless it's the elephant man. But then again, <laughs> with the skin on, I couldn't tell you how old he was. There's something about his head and everything that he's just he's ageless. He could buy a packet of fags and be underage. <laughs> he could get on a bus and say he's an OAP. I have not got a clue <laughs> how old the elephant man was. <laughs> There's no distinguishing things for his age, is no. there? But with most people, it's it's the skin that does it. Strip all that away, and they were all stood upright as well. They were all they weren't sort of unched. Right, unched. They've been straightened up. Not unched then. Um, is that the German bloke unched? But what did I learn? That's what you're asking me. Yeah, well, can, you I, can I answer that? Sure. Fuck all right. <laughs> oh, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> the skin, of course, you are right in saying, is an extraordinary thing. I mean, it, it is un almost unlike any man-made item. It's one of the most waterproof things, obviously, one of the most durable, one of the most, uh, one of the strongest and yet stretchiest. I mean, yeah. it is a remarkable achievement. Yeah. yeah. One, um, square inch of skin, right? Has four yards of nerve fibres in what? In one inch? In one inch, square inch of skin. Mm. It's got uh, mm. thirteen hundred nerve cells and a hundred sweat glands in a in a square inch of skin, and three million cells, right? And three yards of blood vessels, tiny those tiny little things, and they make up three yards worth. But I understand you need the blood bit, but the nerves are shorten the nerves. What do you mean? I wouldn't have as many nerves. I think uh, if I could change it. Well, it depends because there are different amounts per square inch. You've got less on the back of your hand than on the finger tips, obviously. And uh, I think um, I think the most nerve endings are n Tip near of the your spine. Tip of the penis. Well, that's probably going to be quite sensitive. Unnecessary, isn't it? In that, in that. Um, uh, unnecessary. It is really. Why is it unnecessary? Because I'd say what you want, I think you need them in your fingers because you're picking up hot stuff. Sure. I've never put my knob somewhere that I thought I didn't feel that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a quote. <laughs> There's a quote. <laughs> if you're sticking it somewhere bad, well you shouldn't be, so it's your own fault, isn't it? Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think it's just for your penis to be able to identify hot stuff. No. I think it's for other reasons why is it's it, super sensitive. It's, it's not. Is that hob hot enough for your suit? <laughs> well, well, hang on, well, let well, me just check it. Well, no, I've got a thermometer here. <laughs> well, you don't need a thermometer. <laughs> well, no, 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 the thermometer's not accurate. Well, it is, it's a, it's a mercury thermometer. It, 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 well, it, mm, you need some, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want a reading, I want a feeling. <laughs> no. No, you don't need it in that bit. Well, the penis is sensitive, I assume. Because of the sexual stimulation? That yes, because you, you need to- You don't need the nerves for that. Well you do, yeah, because you need- Well something needs to stimulate it for it to know, to send a thing to your brain, and you go, alright, we're- we're mating here, we need to- we need to get half our genetic material to that egg. I lost him, didn't I? Yeah. When did I lose him though? When you tried to explain how babies are born. <laughs> Carl, every human being spent about half an hour as a single cell. I heard about that. <laughs> what do you mean, you've heard about that? The I remember reading it, I, I read it, I think I went to the science museum, and right. it was on the wall, and I just thought, oh, I would have hated that. What, being a single cell? For half an hour. But then when was there ever a chance of a single cell knowing anything? Yeah, if you look at it like that, it's not a problem, yeah. It never was a problem. Why are they telling us then? <laughs> <laughs> oh, for God's sake! <laughs> this is a guide to. We're trying to educate. 
I mean, we, you know, we, we, this, this is for people to, you know, it, it's just an interesting discussion, isn't it? So there are gonna, we are gonna come up with some facts, there are gonna be some things that, um, we don't know the answer to. There's gonna be many things you don't know the answer to. Sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. Sometimes we learn something, sometimes we don't. It's just adding to the debate, really. I just thought it was quite an interesting fact. What do fact. you think when you read that? Um, what goes on in your head? Uh, I think it's incredible that that's how it starts. That you one cell, there that then it divides and divides a, a, again. A cognizant being. Yeah. That every cell knows what it's got to do. It's remarkable. It's remarkable. DNA. Stunning. Yeah, I'm surprised he's not weird. More weird stuff knocking around. I've always said that. But what's weird? Just something that isn't doesn't look like the rest of us. Nothing looks like the rest of us. There's nothing. What's no, weird? No, people wise, I mean, how many people are in the world? Six billion. Six billion. Six billion people. Yeah, you don't walk down the street, and I'd expect every fifth person to be like, "What is that? Look at his head. He's got mm. three legs. Why? Why is the arm on the back of his head?" Why isn't there more defects in it? Well, there has been. Not Don't that forget. many. Do you know, like, that Total Recall? Yeah. Like that? <laughs> Where everyone's a little bit weirder. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, there's only so much you can do. I mean, even in that film there was a woman with three tits. There's only, there's, <laughs> the, you know, I'm not talking about having, like, a, a shoe for a head. <laughs> I'm just talking about <laughs> the like weirdness. A He's amazing, isn't he? <laughs> I just he'd like to see more. He'd like to see more three-titted women. Is what you're saying? Yeah, one. We'd all I like mean, to see it doesn't matter. Mix it up. <laughs> At least then it's a bit more of a surprise. What so you're going to get? One giant boob. <laughs> and it's a shame because it does make the world more interesting. But what's more interesting than the world, you than see, the you're natural endlessly diversity? Bored. You're endlessly bored by the world as it is. We're amazed here. We sit here amazed by these facts, by thinking about the cosmos. You're endlessly bored by it. Always oh, looking for something new and weird and, and alien. Do you know, they, they've mm. estimated that there might be about five million species of animal, right? Mm. But they think there might be another twenty million all insects. So they've, they've stuck it about one, but they wouldn't be surprised if there's another 20 million species of insect. I wouldn't. Right, okay. Well, thanks very much. No, because you start off with the big stuff, don't you? If someone comes along, I mean, I'm still surprised when they say things like we found a new duck, and I think, well, that's <laughs> not hard to find. <laughs> if you're talking about bacteria, I'd go, well done, where did you find it? No. That's the other way around. A new elephant? Wow, really? No. Where was that hiding? No, I'd be annoyed that someone's someone's not found it. If it's there, it's <laughs> not my job to find new stuff. Right. So it's not my problem. Right. But if someone's on the payroll, right, and they're out there trying to find new species, there's and they no, go, there's no one on the payroll. We found a new llama. I'd go, right. well, where's it? Where, 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 why have you missed this? <laughs> right. <laughs> annoyed. Yeah. Not why there's a new llama. <laughs> no, but it's it's harder to find Attenborough. He's been out doing his job for years, hasn't he? Yeah. He was excited that he found a small frog. Yeah. He found a frog, he stuck it on his finger. He said, I've been looking for that for ages. <laughs> <laughs> and you could see- he, he was- under the microwave, down the back of the couch. He was delighted. Yes. He was chuffed. I was chuffed for him. He'd been yeah. looking for it for ages. <laughs> right. Now the thing is, respect due to him there. Mm. His eyes aren't as good as they used to be. Right. He found a small He's frog. He's been looking for it. He kept looking. I'd have given up if I was him. <laughs> but he kept looking. He found it. There it was, a little frog on the end of his finger. Right. It he wasn't on his finger all along, was it? <laughs> I've got more respect for him finding that, yeah. something so small, than someone else whose job it is to also be rooting around for new stuff, coming round the corner with an elephant, saying, look what I've got. I've been looking for this. Yeah, but that's not they what happened. looking hard enough. Then no one's looking for an elephant and has failed to find it. They don't You're know what they're looking for. these people yeah. who are on the payroll yeah. looking for elephants By and failed definition, to find them. they're not looking for new species because they don't know they exist. It's a surprise. No one goes out and goes, what are you looking for today? I don't know. Say a letter. D? Duck then. Let's look for a new duck. Where are you going to look? Pond. <laughs> All right. I know, but sometimes it's the slightest thing. I mean, we've done yes, a lot of insects. Yes, it is, But yeah. you go, I found a spider with, like, a, an orange leg or a, a fish that swims upside down. <laughs> it's like, put it the right way up. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not worth, it's not worth noting. <laughs> I'd say what's, it's got to be a dramatic difference. <laughs> right. Uh, 
Right, you're such dramatic. a bag of contradictions. You'd be annoyed with someone who found a new elephant. You'd think that was a sizable uh, discovery, but no, that would piss you off because they should have found it before. They find a fish just swimming around upside down, put it out the right way. How, how different does the elephant need to be? It comes around the corner, you go, that's just like another elephant. How does it have to be different, right? How, what, what, to you, has to be different? To the point that I don't know it's an elephant. That then, I go, like, like our hippos related to a whale. What look like then? Uh, well, we're all related. All the, we're all related. No, we're not. We're not. Though, yes, we are. It's a yeah. daft thing to say that. No, we are all no, related. All it's related. just a matter of degrees. Um, you understand what it means to be related to your brother, don't you? Yeah. So you understand what it means to be related to um, uh, your cousin. Yeah, it starts getting a little bit. Really, already at cousin. Already yeah, at there's, cousin. There's cousins, I don't it, talk to. I haven't seen cousins. Right. Well, we ne- well, so well, let's forget chimp then. <sighs> My dad said, uh, over Christmas, that, uh, who do you think you are was on. He said, oh, why don't you do that? I said, because it's, it's looking up dead people, there's cousins who I don't even talk to. Yeah, true. I've, I've, I've no idea It annoys me when they cry about their great-great-grandmother, who, they didn't who even they're like, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> didn't even know them. <laughs> don't even know them. And all it's gonna do is dig up problems, innit? You're yeah. gonna find someone out who did something wrong and you're gonna get the blame for it. I don't wanna know. If my cousin was Einstein, very nice. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that's going to add If your cousin was pressure. Einstein, then you really are an underachiever. <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you know what? If he was, I'd know about it. I don't reckon you would know about it. I, I don't I reckon would. your family would be that impressed with Einstein. They would have stayed in touch, He was they? always the weird one with a scruffy hair and his tongue out. Yeah. Nah. I reckon, uh, the stuff we know is enough now. And all we tend to do mm. is, uh, find problems. All the mysteries still in the world. The mind-body problem. What mm. a prick. Mm. How to save the world. Yeah, but we're not, are we? We know it's dying. We don't know how to fix it. Not yet, we don't. Turn your lights off. But then we did You turn yours off. Just <laughs> get sick of it. Leaflets through the door all the time. Turn your eating off. Turn the lights off. Living like a mole. <laughs> <laughs> I love his little internal dialogues out loud. <laughs> They're fantastic. The little discussions he has with himself. Oh, I, I can't wait till he's old. That's going to be amazing. Us three, when we're about 75, 80 of these, he's fucking moaning. Oh, we're in a, we're in a little home together. I <laughs> just suck. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! Oh, Carl! Do you remember when you were 73? No, do I fuck? Tell us the tic tac on do again. <laughs> oh, what a fucking useless bunch of cunts! <laughs> Well, that's about it for the Ricky Gervais Guide to the Human Body. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learnt something. Um, I know Carl didn't. <laughs> um, next one, the final one in this series is the Ricky Gervais Guide to the Earth. Carl, are we gonna do any more guides or...? I think this, that we've covered the main stuff you need to know. Yeah. It was good doing the guides though. I like I, 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 I like the attempt of, um, learning. I remember our early ambition was to actually be educational as well as hopefully entertaining and, and I feel perhaps at times we've perhaps slightly shortchanged listeners in terms of what they're learning. Well they're not learning anything because also, um, even as, uh, you know, compared to Carl, we, we are educated, mm. but we're guessing a lot of the stuff and he flummoxes us, for, you know, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it, it was fun trying to be pompous and professorial enough just to just to fight Carl's ignorance. I think we've learnt more new words from Carl than we've learnt anything else. Yeah. There's yeah. been a lot of made up words, perhaps more than ever before. Hmm. And also so some of the most abstract um, conversations I think we've ever had. I mean Carl's as he gets older it becomes more and more he, um, arrogant and confident. He said a new one to me the other day. Um there was a problem downloading uh, one of the guides on iTunes and uh he said um they've added to the fuckerage <laughs> <laughs> which is good yeah so till the next time it's goodbye for me Ricky Gervais Stephen Merchant goodbye and Carl Pilkington bye This 
audio program is presented by audible.com. Audible, audio that speaks to you wherever you are. St. Francis of Assisi once said, Where there is charity and wisdom, there is neither fear nor ignorance. Acts of human charity have been documented since the beginning of recorded history. Yet even now in the most democratic and economically advanced nations, charity is still necessary. Does this mean that charitable acts are failing to affect meaningful change? Should charity even be the responsibility of individual citizens, or is it the obligation of government? Do handouts make people lazy and dependent instead of resourceful and responsible for their own livelihoods? Is it every man for himself, or are we all in this together? To discuss these questions and more, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, award-winning writer and graduate of the University of Warwick. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. <sighs> Fuck gonk. Right. So, Red Nose Day, comic relief has come round again. Yeah, um, Red Nose Day is obviously the very specific day in the calendar for the whole generic term comic relief, I think. It's it? normally when the uh, telecast happens, yeah. um, people know that that's the day when they can uh, dress up, do charitable acts, but of course Comic Relief is a charity that's working all the time for uh, disenfranchised all over the world. And um, you can go to the website uh, all year round, which is comicrelief.com. I think there's also rednoseday.com, which is uh, if you particularly want to donate for this year's appeal. Are you- have you always been a, a strong champion of comic relief, Carl? Not really. <laughs> uh, Why was I expecting that answer? Well, no. this is- but I mean, we're doing a bit of charity now, we're, we're donating our time, it's not much, it's not costing anything, it's a- But I do loads of stuff without going on about it. That's- mm. I don't- I don't think you should shout about the bitch you do for charity, cos then who are you doing it for? Oh, exactly, I mean, well this is my thing, isn't it, that, uh, uh, there's a lot of people that only do it if it's in the public eye. It's to do it really to be a busybody or to show off or to feel good about themselves. And I suppose that's good and bad. I mean, if it gets you involved, if it does some good, my gift to the world has been you, Carl, to be quite honest. I feel that you're the world's I'm now. sure there's people in Africa going, we'd we prefer blankets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 doing a, a Wills charity, isn't it? Is it? Sort of. I mean, no, if, you, if you make half, if you make a donation to a charity within the will, I suppose that's quite charitable. But just mean, giving money to your relatives isn't, is it? Of course it is. Well, they it shouldn't is, have it. They're it getting something for nothing, but it's, I, mean, I don't know, it's giving something away that you have no use <laughs> for. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, but, but forget that, it's someone is getting something yeah. when they've done nothing for it, really. Well, it is, it, I suppose it is charity, but charity is usually infused with some sort of altruism, is it? It's usually to do with, um, uh, giving a, a piece of something that is kindly because you could do with it. I mean, not, not strictly, I think you can give away something you don't need, but it, it's hardly donating a kidney, is it? Or some of your wages. It's like, it's not charity on your part because you're literally not around anymore. So it's no longer you giving it, it's just some yeah, but money I could, that I could there either was. give it them or not give it them. Once I'm dead and I've turned to mush, I shouldn't be worrying about Suzanne's mum getting a table. <laughs> is but, that what, is that what you're leaving her? Well, I've, I've called up my dad first. Why are you doing a will for the because show? Because of this travel thing that right, I'm yeah. doing and it can get dangerous, you know. But why have you done a will up to now? Because you sort of, uh, I don't know, I felt sort of young and free. <laughs> Whereas now I'm- <laughs> Never, that's never two words I've associated with Carl. <laughs> no. He's always seemed like a man who's in his late fifties. Yeah, and exactly, And I've yeah. never the idea that you're free. It's, it's more- it, it, Even if we're just talking about the head alone, it's, <laughs> it's the, it's the head of a late fifty Free of old. hair. Yeah, <laughs> totally free of fucking hair. I'm sort of getting on first name terms with my doctor. Oh, mm. really? Chatting more. Oh, what is it this time? How's your yeah. middle finger? You Not know. too bad, Carl. All- all that sort of thing, so it's just made me think- Have you had that done for the will, by the way? For insurance I think you stuff? need to, do you, for a will? I think you do. There's nothing a on the paper. Exam. No. No, uh, listen, for insurance purposes, I think you need to have, um, a, a testicular exam for testicular cancer. You're just leaving the high risk for t <laughs> testicular cancer, actually, and you're- you're entering the high risk for prostate. And you can have both at the same time. You could have both the at the same time. At the same time. If he's a very dexterous doctor. 
Um, I wouldn't want that. Why? Too much like it's just too, too much playful. going on. It's like someone juggling you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like being examined by Squidly Diddly. And so you said you called up your dad. Called him up. I said, "Is there anything you want if, <laughs> if I if I die?" Right. And presumably, you know, Suzanne, she's getting the she's getting the lion's share. She is. But then the fella who was on the end of the phone talking us through it all was going, "Oh, you should get married." And I was going, "Oh, shut up." He's saying, well, it make it things a lot easier when it comes to this. And it's like, well, that isn't a reason to get married, is it? <laughs> well. So she can have all my stuff. I said, I've wrote on the bit of paper that mm. she can have it. I'm not bothered. What, I'll what be dead. did you wrote? What did you wrote? You know, all that, whatever's, whatever we've got, she can have. Yeah. Right. Well, that's fine. That's as good as a, yeah. a marriage then, isn't but it? But it's something about, um, tax. If you're not married, you have to hand over more. Well, she'll get, uh, yeah, I suppose if it's money, she'll pay tax on it. Yeah. I think you get so much and then it's like ridiculous tax rate. Yeah. But she's going, you sh that's why we should get married, I'm gonna be paying tax. I'm going, hang on a minute, she's already like thinking about money loss <laughs> instead of me b disappearing. Yeah. She's going, yeah, we should. And I'm saying, look, you'll be getting a load of money. I said, if I die on this program anyway, mm. I'm insured, you'll yeah. be getting about a million pounds for that. Yeah. I said, so that's, that's something you haven't got now. Yeah. Got nowhere near that now. <laughs> I said, so even if you have to pay tax on that. Yeah. I, I don't think it'd be right to get married just in case I get killed. Well, you are married, aren't you? Well, then you may as well get the paperwork. No, because then everyone wants a party. And everyone's yeah, going, oh, party could go you straight do, down honestly, the honestly, people start going, oh, you should do this, and oh, it's not a proper wedding unless you do that. Have you also two sets of parents met? No. That'd be good, would it? Well, I suppose it's a reason to, isn't it? At least if you're getting married, there's a reason for them to meet. At the moment, there's no reason for them to meet. No. They'd get on each other's nerves. My dad wouldn't get on with a man. <laughs> Why? Just wouldn't. She doesn't like me, so she won't like me dad. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's just an exaggerated version. <laughs> so, I think, uh, <sighs> it doesn't need to happen. But you could just nip down the registry office, get it done, done and dusted, and you just phone up your folks and say, it's already happened, I said late. that, I said, listen, if we had to do it, I said if, if it was like we've got to do it for some reason, Mm. I, I said I'd do that. You c we can have it done by two. You can be back in work for three. <laughs> <laughs> because at the end of the day, there's no other. There's no. Th you know, we've known each other for years. Yeah. We're not going to suddenly turn into some sort of Tom Hanks and Med Ryan film <laughs> just because we got married. Yeah. It's going to be the same, exactly yeah. the same. <laughs> yeah. Except she'd want a joint bank account or something. That's mm. the only other thing mm. that would probably change. And I don't like the idea of that. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Just, I like to know what's going on. There's enough people sticking their hand in my account, charity-wise and all that, without an extra hand going in. <laughs> Who is, happens to be the love of your life. <laughs> I'm not moaning about it, I'm just saying it works the way it is. You hear about people getting married and it doesn't last. Adds extra pressure. <laughs> what pressure's it gonna add? Um, it's not gonna add any pressure. I suppose that you yeah. resent the fact that the only reason you would be getting married is because she gets your money after your death tax free. What if you gave her a series of challenges so that she sort of I earned the right to have that it money? It just keeps her on her toes. <laughs> because whilst we're not married, <laughs> it's easy to go, I'm sick of this. So it keeps it. It keeps it. Keeps her of, on her toes. Yeah. But it keeps us both sort because of. Because you're such a find. She's got to yeah. work hard to keep you, hasn't she? When you, what have you? What, you never do anything in order to sort of maintain this relationship, as far as I can tell. I'm not saying no, you're not you're a bad wife, but in terms of was, romantic Meg Ryan type stuff, when, right. when, you never do anything. Me and Jane were out with them and Suzanne the other night, right, uh, at dinner, and honestly, he is so. So grumpy. He was saying about uh, uh, uh for Christmas, right? He said you've had a flaw. <laughs> <laughs> you've had a flaw. <laughs> now what did that mean? We had a new floor put in. But how is that her floor? Because she wanted it. But you walk on it too. I paid for it. I don't understand what but you don't mean. Don't you understand that, like, <laughs> a, 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 you know, a romantic break or a, or <laughs> clothes or perfumes, you know, sort of things that are kind of indulgent for a lady. That's that's a gift, not yeah. a new floor. That is like something you give to some little African fella on comic relief. In fact, I think I saw it once. He didn't <laughs> yeah. have a floor. <laughs> exactly. They built him the floor. I, I remember watching it with you, and they gave him a new pair of shoes and the floor. He went, hold on, floor. Or shoes, not both. <laughs> oh, when when that tsunami hit, 
and uh, it was like a month after Christmas, they showed um, that Britain had given two billion pounds, right? He was going, that's enough. He said, before they were living in mud huts, now there's an Arndale centre. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you think charity is all right as long as the people don't get above their station with charity? I think it should be there as a little, little booster. Something's happened that they didn't expect. They're all a bit in shock. I don't think they'll, they'll, they'll feel bad because all they ever seem to do, these countries that are struggling, they never give anything back. Right. They've always got their hand out. Right. And it's been like that since I was a kid. Yeah. I remember being a kid, people mm -hmm. knocking on the door, my mum going, don't look at the door, there's someone there. <laughs> <laughs> And we just pretend they were Charity there. starts at home, not at your home. <laughs> no, but because it's all the time. I mean, my mum didn't like answering the door anyway, even if it was a pools man, she'd sort of say, don't move and he might not see that we're here. So you just froze where a man was at the door? Well, you just- because the front room was near the door so people right. could see in. Right. So you just sort of stayed there and pretend that either well, you can't so like hear some sort of predator, like- they can't see if you don't move. Well, even if he was peering in through the window and he could see you in there not moving. So he looked through <laughs> and there was three people just frozen, <laughs> right, right, like statues, right, just their eyes looking at him yeah. and well, he's confused. Well, they're clearly dead on move on. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's obviously been a gas leak. <laughs> <laughs> and did you did you say sitting or stand up or no. did you sort of like throw yourself? No, we just, we just sat. We just sat on on the you know where you were and you just stayed still. But did he ever look in and see? I you don't know. Cause you didn't turn around, did you? <laughs> so you would pretend you couldn't hear the door. It's easy. It's honestly, the amount of times people would come round, it's either- right. It seemed to be the 80s had a lot of it, because it was yeah. all the Avon thing, wasn't it? It was perfume. Yeah. Yeah. Tupperware. What? Tupperware. Tupperware? Yeah. The plastic <laughs> boxes. Tupperware! <laughs> <laughs> Tupperware! It's, tupper it's dishes for fat people. <laughs> uh, here we go. Hello? These are big, good they are. They're for fat fuckers, like you to eat out of. There was the pills, man. Right. Just a lot of charity stuff. They're just a lot- it seemed to be the time, the 80s, that they suddenly found out they can sort of scav money off people. Yeah. And oh, there was a lot of scaving. So, that- uh, that's why we used to ignore the door. <laughs> I just love this image of you. Yeah. <laughs> you're so in Simon. the lounge, yeah. you're having a little boogie, it's Christmas, someone's yeah. tapping on the glass. <laughs> Freeze! Freeze. <laughs> they just go, well, we'll move on. Yeah. Nothing yeah, here for yeah. us. Hammer time. <laughs> Silence. There's <laughs> a- uh, uh, let, let- okay, right, let's do the scenario. I'm- I'm at the door. Uh, I can- I can see you in there. You might as well come open the door. Carl? Carl? Why are you staying so still? Are you, are you trying to avoid me? 